first world order radio final lead final lead we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio we get on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. Peace, peace, peace. Back once again with Dr. Aline Bay on First World Order Radio. We got, of course, our special guest tonight, Brother Panic, is back with us once again. And he's going to be speaking on metaphysical updates. Brother Bobby Hammond, and much, much more, plus question and answering. So make sure y'all get your questions ready, because he will be answering them. And begin ready to bring on my co-host. Hello. Peace, brother. How you doing tonight? How you doing? Oh, I'm doing well, brother. How's brother doing? Right. Doing right. well, All doing right. well. All right, we ready to get into the show. Let me bring on Brother Pig right here. Brother Pat, you Peace, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you loud and clear, God. Here you go. Uh, yeah, loud and clear, brother. Kind of, hey, what's up, brother Al? The music sounded kind of kind of suspect there, so uh just making sure you as long as you hear the voices. Can you loud and clear, clear, brother? Yes, sir. Good, good. So it's been a while. We're back in action. There's so much going on. You know, metaphysically, it's time to get tackle some stuff. The 2014 is coming up. So it's time to get our learn back on, you know, and uh, there's a couple of a couple of little things came through. Primarily, we're going to do a question and answer tonight. Um, but, you know, been very busy, you know, been swarmed in mailing packages out, trying to catch up, classes, so on and so forth. The party's still going on. But what you probably noticed, and I've noticed this with a lot of conscious people, depending on your level of consciousness, a lot of shit has just been going down in terms of uh, family issues. Now, if you're really conscious, you're probably noticing a lot of shit that's happening to people around you because your energy is so at such a high vibratory rate. It's not really happening to you. But if you're on the verge of consciousness, there seems to be a lot of shit going down, like that, that, that always darkness before the dawn type thing is going mm-hmm. on. And like as I've been talking to people over the la- over this little hiatus that we've been off, you know, I'm getting story after story of all of this goddamn uh, misery, human misery that's going on in you know people's lives. With me and Khadija, it's been our kids. Oh my goodness, 
uh, humanity is in full fucking effect around this son of a bitch. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's in full effect. And uh, nothing's really happening to us directly, but it doesn't mean nothing because if it's happening to them, it's not like we can sit idly by. This, and, I mean, when I tell you shit is happening to them, see, Aleem knows them. And, and if I told you the shit that uh, they're doing, he was like, who the fuck are those motherfuckers? The goddamn no Hopi Indians, you know what I'm saying? Living in my goddamn house. So, but a few things happen or starting to happen to break through. Now, without going into the details of Hanneman, even though the fuck I should, and even though most of y'all should know who Hanneman as a mythological figure is, as a deity and his purpose and what he can be used for if you in true if you indeed deal with deity work, if you deal with spirit work, you will also know that Hanuman, like most Hindu deities, have different avatars. Some of these avatars have names that we recognize. Some of these avatars, the names have been lost, but they're just different versions of that energy for different times and different situations. So there's a Hanuman for a certain time, and that same Hanuman energy his avatar can be used for a different time period. So this is why I go into detail a lot, or you've heard me say over the years how you picking one deity and sticking with that deity from, from your life to your death is not really healthy or is just a certain level of understanding or just another version of religion because just like you change Basically, these spirits are nothing more than your thoughts or your thought forms. Mm -hmm. And they need to be, they they don't need to be so finite in what they can do for you. Or if you make them finite in what you can do do to you, you you freeze yourself. So if you you have five deities that you deal with and and you're feeding them the same thing, you have a relationship, a thought relationship, because that's all you really have with spirits, a thought-provoked relationship, and you think the same way you did five years ago as you think at, with it now, Nothing. How, how can it change for you? How can anything change for you? And that's just basic shit you learn in elementary school, that for, uh, for if you do the same thing, you're going to get the same result. So we need to understand our ancients were a little bit more complex and how they dealt with spirits as opposed to being so absolute. This is Obachala. If you do that, you're doing it wrong. Or if you do that, you're doing it right. That's later day. That's after superstition has laid in or religious, a religious mindset has laid in or a cultural system has laid in. Mm-hmm. So that's when right and wrong comes into play. But as a scientist, experimentation is encouraged. So... Those who I try to deal with, talk to, raise up, share with, become peer-to-peer with are people with a scientific mind that's ready to deal with this thing a little bit more, uh, uh, less finite, a little bit more um, spontaneous, if you will. Therefore, you can get more out of the energies that you're trying to use. So... One of the quests that I find myself doing is trying to find new names for the avatars of some of these archetype energies. This is because when the, when the energy reveals itself, it's giving me a way to access it that's personal to me, sometimes can be shared with others, because others share the same plight as me, i.e. Negroes in America, and or it may be something personal for me because I have a personal issue that I may need to deal with and that energy needs to serve me in that way as opposed to a, a, a massive way it may need to serve me in a personal way. So this weekend, last weekend, these and the sisters, the motherfuckers br- uh, busted out the Ouija board. You know what I'm saying? Now, 
and it's good to talk about this because I always get this question and I glaze over it. But it's good to talk about this. But people always ask me, should we be using the Ouija board? <laughs> well, Bobby Hemmett broke down a long time ago and quite eloquently in a lecture how the Ouija board is Moorish in nature. It is a it is a divination tool that is from us, for us, by us, fubu. And in, later on, it became what we see what we see and understand today is this game. But originally, you would have a goal when you would use the Ouija board as opposed to just getting on the board and seeing what goes down. And as it became a game, most people just uh, play with it, follow the rules, and anything could come through. But the true understanding is to have a particular goal or a particular deity that you're trying to make contact with so you can uh so you can uh 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 for lack of a better way to explain it, be safe because that's what people are asking. Is it safe to use the Ouija board? Well it's safe as anything else is safe magically if you are conscious of what you're doing. If you have no idea what you're doing, you're calling on any energy just as you're ignorant to your own it's just really you're ignorant to your own power. It is nothing yeah. out there that is devious or trying to get you. It just would be like someone who's trying to stick their tongue in a light socket. It's like the electricity is not ev- evil or trying to get you. You're just doing the wrong thing with it. You get what I'm saying? You don't stick a fork in a toaster. So it's not like the toaster is evil. You're just ignorant. So once you get past your ignorance, none of this stuff can really harm you. No more than you would say, well, why would I stick a fork in a toaster or put water on electricity or, or, or listen to my radio in the bathtub? It's just things you understand not to do when you're dealing with uh, electricity. So, and you need to understand how powerful a Ouija boy could be. There's a white rocker who's been around even before, close to around the time I was born named Allison Chains. His real name is whatever, whatever. But one day on the Ouija board, he contacted a witch from Salem called Alice, and he named his group after Alice. And the white boy, Alice in Chains, um, made an entire career off of contacting one witch on the Ouija board. She looked out for his ass. So it could be anything. Now, when they made contact, they were trying to contact Hanneman because a sister came over and the Hanneman statue, she just kept she just kept following her, the ones that were in my house all around the house. So she started asking, who's Hanneman? So I explained to her who he was. And, in fact, I lent her a copy of the Ramayana, which is the epic story of Hanneman, and gave her one of my Hanneman statues um, because he came through and said he wants to be with her. This is a break, and, and just knowing her, and, I, and I'm and i going to say it as nice as I can, that's a big fucking breakthrough for her. Now, um, so, of course, Khadijah and them cracked that Ouija board because their parents and grandparents used to fuck with it when they were little. So they So that's something they were never scared of. So their cousins are over, and Hanneman comes through, and he comes through with a new name. And we and we understood the name to be something we can use now if you're going through a whole bunch of hardship, human hardship. His, one of his avatar names is Yaz, Y-A-Z. So he came through with that, explained to him he's a moon god. Hanuman also uh, can be compared to Tehuti. Hanuman is, um, Hanuman is just basically a Tehuti figure a wise figure, a, a figure of alchemy. And that's where you also get the ape of Thoth as well, which is a moon god. So when he started talking this lunar stuff, we knew it to be Hanuman. That's who they were going for. And he kept telling her to call him by the name Yaz, which is just basically a way of calling on one of his avatars, especially in this particular time because there's a lot of ash whipping going on. So those of you who do deal with spirits, do deal with um, this type of energy, which is something I've been urging 
for years because your life will change in terms of control. Yaz is the new hot shit for the Hanuman energy, especially if you're going through some human bullshit. You get what I'm saying? And there's and there's and if you're not going through some human bullshit, get, just give it a second. Just give it a second. Something will, something will be happening soon. Um, another interesting thing. A couple of things on Netflix. There's a show on Netflix called 4400. 4400 is about 4400 people who've been abducted and then uh, they're sent back to Earth. There's about four seasons or five seasons on Netflix. Season four, I want you to listen closely to this. Season four, episode one. This show was filmed in 1995. They did a whole Trayvon Martin show in 1995. Now, you niggas have been absolutely, positively duped. When you watch this TV show in 1995, this one episode, episode four, number one, they do the hood, they do the martyr shit. The kid just didn't die. They copied about 50% of the Trayvon Trayvon Martin story. They, they martyred him. They made him a Jesus. Everyone started wearing hoods like him because of his plight. They did so they, – it was textbook, Trayvon Martin's story that came out later in the 2000s. So all of that debating, all of that I'm, I am Trayvon Martin shit shows you have been socially engineered, clearly. I don't even have to say any more. Just watch the episode. Everything Trayvon Martin, and it's called the 4400. Um, and this particular episode is the first episode of season four. There's also something else on Netflix that is a absolute must watch. It is called Kamari. This shit is about. So I said, what's the name of the show again? This is the 4400, spelled with numbers, 4400, the 4400. It's about 4,400 people got abducted by, these, by the future and sent back to Earth. And, you know, the, the show is pretty good, but season four, episode one, they did the entire Trayvon Martin story, hands down. Not even, you don't even have to stretch. They did hoods. Whatever the dude's name was, Billy, everybody's running around with hoods saying, I am Billy such and such, just like they were saying, I am Trayvon Martin. Hands down. Social engineering, they show you the bullshit. They're writing a script, writing a script to the bullshit we following. Social engineering. So all them pictures of Trayvon Martin you put up, they just made you a ghoul, as I've been saying before. That's your proof of the pudding. You're just a ghoul. Now, here's another thing I just watched on a humble Turned out to be the best shit I've seen this year, called Kumari. Um, spell it the best way you can, K-U-M-A-R-E or whatever it was. You, you'll find it on Netflix. It's a documentary, and there's this Indian dude from New Jersey. I think that's it, uh, Aline, K-U-M-A-R-E. Indian dude from New Jersey, regular dude just like me and you, regular dude just like me and you. And his parents um, followed the old ways, Hindu religion, and he was trying to find out the secret and what this was all about. So what he decided to do was create a religion, become a guru or dress like a guru and create a religion and see how many follows he can get. And he did the bullshit. He did this bullshit. He uh, he called himself Kamari, got a role, came, act like he came from America, put on an Indian voice, and got these followers. The only thing missing, them niggas was not saying hotep. That shit was so <laughs> eerie. The, that, that shit was so fucking eerie 
how this nigga made this shit up. He had motherfuckers making chants up, singing in circles. Do you see the blue light? Yes. This nigga went through it with these motherfuckers. And I've never seen, this shit almost made me cry. I've never seen so many motherfuckers eager to follow a nigga. And that's what he was saying. He said, ultimately, he's going to prove to people that you do not need to follow anything. All of this shit is with inside of you. But what it's shown was people have this undying need to look at something outside of themselves as something greater than themselves. It is probably one of the best shits ever, how he goes through it. I don't want to give too much of it away. How he goes through it and eventually... Uh, gets them to understand. Uh, at, he reveals himself in the end. Some people walk the fuck out because they said, you, you, you had a motherfucker reading them. You had, you was, I see so many Kamaris in your past life. It's your turn to be the Kamari. Like, giving them past life reads. The nigga sitting there looking at the camera like, I'm from Jersey. The shit was sick. But then he had a realization. You, know, you, you should have heard him. He, he was saying, he had him chanting, I am bullshit. He <laughs> shit was ridiculous. And they sitting there chanting this shit. Now, but in it, he had a realization because of, he did change so many lives. Because then he started giving a list of all these people that was in it and all the lives that actually did change, even in his bullshit. So what was the message? What it told me was one of the things I kind of knew, but it says it so that everyone can knew. All of this shit we doing is from our own heads. That's what it means when it says this is an illusion. It works because you agreed for it to work. So all of this debating and arguing and, um, and, 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 and this right or wrong is irrelevant. It's all what you decide that works. It's only levels of energy. So if, if, if slapping your knee and praying to Jesus took you to another level because certain motherfuckers got off of drugs, for that person, it is a powerful thing. While you're sitting there going, no, that's wrong, that's wrong, it doesn't matter. In their mind, you cannot con- they convince themselves. So you can convince yourself of anything. You had these people sitting there going, I am bullshit, I am bullshit, and, and believing they went to the next level. This tells, you, this tells you your mind, whatever your mind truly decides to accept, is the only thing that's actually real. Everything else is an illusion. So it's up to you to fortify your mind, to, or, or that's, that's why you have the power to fortify your mind any direction you so choose. You just need, how do you say, a program that does it. See, it says you're a doctor because you went to school and you went through that shit, but you, you just, it, it, that's the only reason it says you're a doctor and you believe you're a doctor, because you went to school and they call you doctor. You get what I'm saying? You're not more special. You weren't born here for whatever. You were trained, and this shit is about training. All of this shit is about training. Magic is about training. These classes I do is about training and convincing yourself. Once you are convinced yourself, there's methods for convincing yourself. Once you have convinced yourself, it, then your reality becomes uh, uh, whatever you have chose to accept. Therefore, you, you have to go beyond what's right or wrong. You get what I'm saying? Only what works and doesn't work. And it, which is something I've been telling you for a long time. How do you know your magic? How do you know you did it right, Patty? It doesn't matter if you did it right. Is it working? Is it working? You're supposed to do it that way. You're not supposed to do it that way. If you it, Are you using common sense? Says the fuck who? That's what you convince yourself is right. You must be initiated by a Baba Lao in Nigeria for you to be able to even say the word, Ashe. That's something that somebody said. You can't even say the word I say unless you're initiated. 
That's some bullshit. You that's some bullshit. Somebody dupe you into believing. You believe it so much so that you're willing to tell the world that shit as a right or wrong. It's ridiculous. You get what I'm saying? So so when you watch this Kamari thing, like I said, two things. You'll see how how desperate people are, and really how any of this religious stuff, any of this whole tap is emotional. And that's one of the things I used to say to you all the time. They're looking for an emotional release. No one is looking for a scientific understanding. Once you shift your emotions out of this, get a scientific thirst as opposed to an emotional hole that you're trying to fucking fill and get a scientific thirst, you automatically change the energy. And the, it, how does the energy change? You start to look within for your answers, which ultimately was the message that even he came to. Playing the fuck, playing the fuck around. That was the ultimate message. He was like, "Yo, y'all the fucking guru." You know what I'm saying? Sure. Y'all mad? Y'all niggas. He told him, "Y'all need to stop pretending y'all don't know shit." You know what I'm saying? Y'all need to stop pretending you don't know shit and and get and and, and do and do what you know. So we need to stop pretending that the fucking Illuminati got us by the neck. We need to stop pretending that life is just so fucking hard that we can't master this little bullshit. We need to stop pretending that the white man has such fucking mystical power. We need to stop pretending which one is better than the next and which system is better than the next and fucking get something done. We need to start, we need to start getting back to knowing. You know what I'm saying? We need to stop doing things to try to cheerlead a belief system to get ourselves to believe something, to keep saying something over as proof that we don't even believe some shit. You get what I'm saying? As proof we don't even believe some shit. We need to get back to the system of knowing. Knowing. You get what I'm saying? An inner knowing. You get what I'm saying? An inner knowing. Tying your shoe is an inner knowing. That's why we don't walk around bragging about how we tie shoes. But you don't know, that's why you walk around talking about she's the queen and whole tep. But you're still trying to convince yourself and the people around you that they are. There ain't no Jesus. You don't believe that shit because you're still trying to convince people. Once you understand there ain't no Jesus, there's no reason to say it anymore. Like, there's no reason to say, I'm not to put on my shirt because I assume that you're not to put it on the mere, the mere fact that you're wearing one. I'm not to button my pants. I assume you know how to do it because your pants are buttoned. So you don't have to cheerlead it. You don't have to say it. You don't have to prove it to me. So if you have to tell me that the black woman is a queen, that means you don't believe that shit. So once you believe that shit and and you act accordingly, that means you know. You get what I'm saying? So the mere fact that you have to keep championing it is is just proof in the pudding that you're telling me you don't know. You're still trying to convince yourself that the black woman is special. Yeah, get it together. You know what I'm saying? You ain't bullshitting me. You're bullshitting yourself. So one of the things I definitely want to uh, say is you need to start thinking about your interpretation of this. That's what you need to evaluate, your interpretation of what consciousness is, because that's the only thing that matters. What you convince yourself of is the only thing that matters. You can say breathing is going to save my life and my kidneys. Or on the other hand, you could say do you think that's air you're breathing? Like like Morpheus said, you pick a side. You get what I'm saying? You pick a side. And and don't worry about contradicting yourself. See, uh, another thing we do, this is one of the biggest things. This is our biggest problem or one of our biggest problems or top ten on that list, a word called logic. The white man is terribly, absolutely, undoubtedly the most logical entity on planet Earth. So much so that he got us to believe that to be a logical man, you are an absolute genius. And logic in this case basically means there's got to be a a, a left-brain reason for everything. One plus one must equal two, and if, if you cannot figure out the formula of one plus one, if you can't to figure out what two means, you must figure out the formula of one plus one. 
when black people, our higher science is like, fuck it, it's just it's all numbers. You get what I'm saying? Meaning we are willing to accept, we, we don't need the logical path, we are just what we are. That's a, that's a part of just knowing. So we can, uh, well, on the other, another example of it, you look in the cupboard, the cupboard is bare. There's no food, but niggas still know how to make a meal. White people look at the cupboard, shit is, it's terrible. Like, uh, I can't believe this thing is happening to me. There's only grits in here. What's a grit? You know what I'm saying? Niggas will have that shit looking like filet mignon before the night is over. It's like, we don't need logic to make a meal. It's like we could use imagination. We could, uh, uh, we we could use uh, what's the word I'm looking for uh, when when it's done on the spot. You get what I'm saying? Um, we could do we we could we don't need to have plans. There's the spontaneous or chaotic or chaos beings. So what you have now is us trying to be intelligent black people, and this intelligent black people now has us trying to be logical like white people in our thoughts. So now our logic is what's taking us up out the magic, us trying to reason, us trying to be in politics with white folks, us trying to um, um, master a Democrat-Republican system, something that was way beneath us in the first place. We were beyond this system, so we have lowered our standards for logic. So one of the main goals, um, and spontaneous was the word I was looking for, one of the main goals, not in Bobby saying this straight out, even though he has, but he's demonstrated, Bobby Hemet has demonstrated on many occasions um, this idea of notion of going past logic because he's trying to tell you, He's trying to relate to you the mindset, or he has been in his teaching trying to relate to you the mindset. So while you logically say echinacea works for me, and you only think echinacea works to heal you because someone else told you that it works to heal you, and you agree to it, Bobby Hemmings is telling you, I heal myself with peach soda. And, and you're saying that's not logical. You get what I'm saying? That doesn't is not right. What he's trying to tell you is, you made it, he made it right, or you can make it right with your mind because it's what you decide to agree to. So he had, if you listen over the years, you'll hear plenty of these stories that sound outrageous, irrational, illogical from Bobby Hemmett because what he was teaching, teaching the, as a whole, and what I, one of the biggest things I got from him is to throw away reason, ration, and logic as something that guides your life, something that could be factored in, but something that does, because this, this, in this logical world, you're going to have to use logic, but ultimately for your magic, for your ancient experience, for your conscious work, logic will have to take a back seat to imagination. Even Albert Einstein, one of his favorite lines is, I can't, and I'm paraphrasing, blah, 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 but imagination is ten times more important than intelligence. <clears throat> this is the man that gets the award for being the most intelligent man on the planet, or one of them. And his, and, and his determination was imagination is ten times more important because whatever you can visualize, that means you can make into your reality. And that's all magic really is, a, a, a way or a pathway of visualization Imagination, a visualization to make it into a reality. That's what magic is. So when you start talking about, well, you have to do it this way, you have to pour 12 glasses of water, you have to be initiated, you, you, you miss the point because the point quite simply is ma all magic really is is using your mind to control your reality as opposed to using your physical senses to control your reality. So however you get there, as long as you get there is, 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 is actually the goal, as long as you get there. So, so when you start dealing with bad or good, you're dealing with religion. You get what I'm saying? There is no such thing as bad or good. I've always given the example, 
If you walked outside, see me beating up an old lady, you would say, oh, my goodness, that's bad. But then I'd show you five minutes before she just killed all my children. Oh, my goodness, that's justice. You get what I'm saying? So it, it, it always depends on the context, but it's the, the same act. It's just how you interpret it or how you decide to interpret it. You get what I'm saying? So all of that to say, uh, um, you have to really start taking, or we have to really start taking our own ideas and running with them and understanding that's the most important because we're always looking outside of ourselves for someone to have a, to have a better idea than what we feel already. And that's, that's where we're failing. And you'll see that in that movie, uh, Kamari, which is excellent. Uh, let's see. So, okay, and, you, and I'm sure most of y'all by now have heard Bobby's update. We were glad to do that, glad to bring you that. I'm sure you heard it on the Lean Show as well. It's on YouTube. It's about a half an hour of Bobby talking. Now, all this time, I was waiting for them to say it, but uh, I knew how major, no one really knew how major Bobby's stroke was. And even on the tape, you cannot tell. When I went to see him in the hospital, when he first had that stroke, I thought it was curtains. That was it. You know, there was also an aneurysm with it, so his brain was swollen. It was, it was, it, it, it was everything you, you, you knew to be, well, it was nice to know Bobby. So I thought it was over. It was over. And if he was to come back, uh, you know, you, you, I didn't think it would be so great. But turns out, you know, he's got a big will. And you can hear for yourself, his mind is still there. Um, his body still needs the therapy, but his mind is still there. You know what I'm saying? He looking real good, surprising. When I came to his house, I'm thinking I was going to see, you know, it was going to be real hard, but he actually looked really good. And, um, you know, we went over there a couple of weeks, hung out with him, and Linda said uh, basically just by hanging out with him, he's been bringing him back. He's been making them sharp. You get what I'm saying? Um, because uh, when it's just them, it's not really much for him to say at the house. So when I, uh, so she's saying, like, damn, man, when you get here, you know, it sounds like the old Bobby. And it do. You know, he's telling me about books and this and that, making jokes, so on and so forth. And, and that was early when we taped it. By the end of the day, shit, he was doing the regular shit. You know what I'm saying? Saying funny shit. He was, like, t- telling me. When we went out, he was like, yeah, I had to tell the angels, uh, Raphael and them. I said, Raphael, please do not let me shit on myself when I'm out with panic. And I'm, you know, funny-ass nigga. So he's doing really good. And, you know, after he heard himself on the tape, he actually he said it gave him a lot of confidence because he's, he hasn't heard his own voice sense the stroke, so when he didn't sound like he was a babbling idiot, I think it gave him a lot of confidence, because he was through, even before the stroke, he was through with talking anyway. But I, um, but I think now after this adventure, we might get something out of him, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, and so, so, you know, I just want to shout out Bobby and Linda, and, you know, I want to say how say as always, how much I appreciate Bobby, how strong he is, you know what I'm saying, you know, how he, you know, you know, what he's done, and you guys have done an excellent job. After he's done the, uh, the, uh, the tape, you guys have donated again, you know, as we humbly asked, and it, you know, it does help a lot. It helps his therapy, because he, he's the one who pays the bills, it helps his rent. Linda, if y'all guys buy the stimulus package, all of those things, she, she's going to start selling it again soon. But her taking care of Bobby, she can't sell those things. So it's like there's no income but what you guys provide. And you guys have been doing a great job. And like I said, the therapy he's in, he kept talking about that therapeutic center that he's in. And it's the one that, you know, he was all jazzed on it because it's the one that Superman went to, Christopher Reeves. 
So that's all he talks about. Oh, shit, man, that's where Superman was. But it's, it's probably one of the best, definitely the best in the land, but one of the best in the world, and it's very expensive. So, so thanks to black folks out there, they're getting Bobby the best care he can possibly get. You know, I, I will say I got to give Linda a shout out. Man, shit. Every three minutes, Linda, Linda, I'm like, she's there for him. You know what I'm saying? Wiping his mouth, straightening him out, pushing him around. So, like, when we went out, I was like, yo, I'll just give you a break. She's like, shit, all I want to do is just get a, a, a pillow. Because she can't even buy a pillow because there's nobody to take care of him. So we were able to, we were, he, he'll stay with me. So she was able to do some things. But other than that, she's 24 hours of Bobby Hemmings. You couldn't ask for a more sincere, uh, committed queen. You 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 really can't, cause you know uh, I know uh, in my in my mind Khadija would do that for me, but it's a theory. You know what I'm saying? It's a theory, but uh, I think it'll happen. You know what I'm saying? There were some events where it's like, okay, that that was that was solid. That was real solid. You didn't have to wipe that up. But that was real solid, uh. So she's been passing some uh, tests, you know what I'm saying. But you know, you know, I ain't wearing diapers, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So, so I, we gonna give Linda props like like nobody's business, and like uh, I knew she was always a good person. She was always strong and all of those good things. But uh, she more than proved it, man. She she handling fools and handling fools like uh. He just kept going, Linda, Linda, Linda. She said, what? He said, okay. Like, <laughs> he put that stare on his ass, and he just said, okay. The nigga is funny, yo. The whole shit is, that nigga is still hilarious. You know what I'm saying? So, like, so, I, I mean, you know, like I said, more than anything, he's been a good friend, and it's just good to see that black people are definitely looking out. Y'all, y'all putting your little help where your mouth is. It's not just this whole tap bullshit all the time and and thank you so much. You know, you know, the little three dollars, four dollars, twenty dollars, you should help him. And, you know, and now I see it more than ever because um, you know before this, I was straight, you know what I'm saying? I was already a computer tech. I had my Microsoft, all of my network shit. So my regular job was regular good shit with benefits and, and, and all the white man shit. So I'm out the game now, especially now. I wouldn't even know what the fuck to do. Even shit, four years ago, after I started uh, doing lectures, I went to an interview. Oh, my God, I looked like an asshole. Because I, 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 you, you forget all the computer shit to add all the conscious shit. I can't do both. Then he's like, how the fuck did you get any of this shit you got? This shit, they, how do you add a printer? Oh, um, I, I forgot all this shit. Like the spirit threw that shit right out of my head. So if I would have to rebuild so many fucking credentials just to get a regular job. Oh, man. So I, I, I know it's hard. So working with you motherfuckers, y'all better come through. Some shit happened to me. Because y'all motherfuckers, all that thank you panic. Fuck that shit. I ain't fucking on welfare going, I, I was a good man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all niggas just chilling. So I, I can see how important that shit becomes. And this nigga been doing this since the 90s, so there ain't no job he can get into. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no job he can get into. So, I mean, me, I actually probably could transition to something if I had to or whatever, but... Shit, you know, ain't nothing he can get into, man. All right, so I just wanted to thank Bobby, and you know, if y'all haven't know, if y'all don't know, you know, y'all can hear what he's talking about, and and I think they're gonna do another one in a while, not soon, but in a while. Um, let me point out that classes, I'm still doing classes, very important. Get on it now, if you do not know. Let me explain this. It's four weeks of classes, and um, it's basics and magic. Um, I've been, this is the tenth cycle, and so this is old hat now. This is nothing new. This is not an experiment. 
you got we already over a hundred people that lives have changed. You don't have to take my word for it. When if you were to email me, I would send you the information about classes. We're going to start in December. I will send you the information about classes, and uh, you could talk to the people who took the class and let them tell you what they got out of it themselves. Now, uh, like I said, it's four weeks. You deal with basic magic. Um, uh, send, it, send me an email, panicpack at hotmail.com, and what I'll do is send you the information packet over, and uh, you can see what, we, what we're about to get into. Like I said, we're about to start. Probably one of the most important things you can do if you're trying to go to the next level, like I said, each person gets what they get out of it, and usually you'll hear a person talking about um, it was the key to whatever they was they had missing. It was the it was the last thing. It was that one thing that did that, and it took them to here and there and the other thing. And I've seen some real, real magical shit happen in this class for a lot of folks. So it is the thing to do. Of course, I got herb packs, all sorts of different kind of herbs. Uh, uh, CDs for meditation, spiritual baths, uh, a couple of other things, crystals, uh, Ganesha crystals for meditation, belladonnas, or, you know, there's a whole list. Email me for that list. Be happy to send it your way. Um, what else we got going on? Aline has the chakra packages, and I told you all about my boy, Jerry Miller, who has the um, organite. If you don't know what organite is, first thing you do is need to research and look it up. And then once you look it up and find how much you need this in your life, one of the best locations to get it from uh, from a craftsman is a guy named Jerry Miller. He is on uh, Facebook. And if you can't get him on Facebook, email me, and I'll be happy to forward you his email. Email me at panicpack at hotmail.com, P-A-N-I-C-P-A-C-K, at Hotmail, and uh, and uh, we will get it on. So remember, these classes are about to start. Get your ass in class. And I guess we can go to some Q&A. Um, after we got all the chat not doing. Now we're going to – now I'm, I'm back. So that means we're going to do some more – we're going to do more and more uh, talks. Uh, we're going to do more and more talk. So uh, also – Email me, but with good shit of a subject you may want to deal with that you would like Aline and myself to deal with. Don't hit me with no Tavis Smiley bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Don't ask me why Obama wears his hair to the side. I don't give a fuck about that. Don't ask, and I don't want to talk about your personal problems. So think of a, think of a subject um, and something that's worthwhile. Something that more than more than your personal, uh, uh, more than you can do personally, but but to benefit many people. You know what I'm saying? I was thinking about doing the clip off. Um, I know I did one before. I can't find it. But I was thinking about dealing with the clip off. I did really quick about an hour on the Wizard of Oz. I just went straight to. Uh, I didn't, I didn't think we would do a whole blog talk on it, um, but it actually got powerful. Um, the, the Wizard of Oz, I didn't think we would uh, a whole blog talk. It merited a whole blog talk. So one of these days I just felt like talking about the Wizard of Oz and did something online. So if you haven't seen that, you got to go to my occult lectures page. You can also email me at panicpack at hotmail.com. I'll send you all the links to the shows I ever did or to my group on Facebook, if you want to stay in the loop, know when things are happening, you got to join my Facebook group, um, Pandemonium. Uh, also, Occult Lectures on YouTube. That's where I'll put up the Bobby. Uh, Aline, Aline, you got the package that I sent you? Yes, I sure oh, did. Yeah, uh, oh, okay. All right, good. Wait, I, I have Aline DVDs. Yeah, no problem, brother. You know that. I have Aline DVDs, but, but Aline is still active, and you can get them from Aline, so I don't want to put them up, but you need to get some Aline shit. See, now, in fact, the, the, the DVD that I sent him was a copy of his teachings at school. Now, you got to understand, Aline is also a master teacher, one that I've learned plenty from as well. So let's, he's not just a radio show host. And um, 
one of his teachings are the 13 uh, tribes of the Illuminati. I believe that's what it's called. But it's basically breaking down the Illuminati and what the Illuminati really is. And I think it's probably one of the most important DVDs because there's so much misinformation about what the Illuminati is. If you, why, how come I'm clear on what the Illuminati is? Actually, is because I've seen that tape a long time ago, a long time ago. And he breaks down the 13 families. See, the Illuminati is a bloodline. It's not a group you can join. There are subordinate groups that you could be initiated into, but Beyonce will never be the Illuminati. It's not from the original 13 families. And Aline goes in detail on that. So you can contact Aline. I'm sure he's going to put up his uh, uh, his website, but DrAlineLBay.com, I believe, and you can get that. You can get where, where you could uh, see what the Illuminati truly is so you can move past what, you, what, what they've been hyping you up to think that they're doing. Um, there's three more chapters that need to be edited in my book. That's it. And we're going to start on Monday, finish that shit up on Monday. Let me say it. I've said it before. I am tired of this fucking book, and it's time for it to come out. So I'm going to knock this three, these three chapters out. It has to go to book editing, and then I am printing this shit up and giving it whatever. It is going to be ready. I am so tired of this book shit <coughs> being hanging over me. It is. It is time. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna get this. This. This is the year of getting everything out the. Everything. Everything out the pot. Everything out the pot. So again, for that Oregon, hit me up for Jerry Miller's information. I'd be happy to pass it your way. And I, you know, I wouldn't give out his email, but I only want. I'm kind of uh, uh, serious. Well, you know, I don't want a thousand people emailing him. Um, so, so the people who are serious are going to email me first, and I don't, and I don't mind passing it on. So, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of action. Get at us, and um, we're going to keep it going. We're going to keep going with these talks. And I guess now we can hit the phones. All right, we're going to go to area code 763. Area code 763, you're on the air. Hello? Yes, yes greetings. Greetings. Good evening, you guys. Um, my name is Shirley. Yes. How you doing, Shirley? I'm doing fine, thank you. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, we can. <laughs> well, I'm so glad to be able to get through and speak to you guys. Um, so, I, what is it that we can actually, that I can actually talk to you about? I'm Whatever you like. Okay. Whatever you like. Whatever okay. you like. <laughs> okay. So, one of the things that I'm finding on my journey here that is that I am not able to remember my dream. Mm-hmm. And so, like. When I have a dream, I can remember, like, a piece of it, but not enough to write it down. But, Mm -hmm. like, I'll have one where I can remember it, and then it it actually happens. And then I'll Mm -hmm. just be in the point talking to somebody, like, what, with the same actual person, but I don't say nothing to them about it. It's just, Mm -hmm. like, wow. You know, and it, it might not, the whole conversation or whatever happened in a dream won't happen right on that first, you know, um, experience with that person, but then, like, the next conversation, it just all eva- comes back into what mm-hmm. that dream was. And then I'm just mm-hmm. like, okay. But to, to, but, re- first, but, to remember your dreams more, um, mm-hmm. you have to get into a technique called astral traveling. You've heard of it before? Y- yeah, yeah. And one of the best books I always recommend is a book called Astral Dynamics by Robert Bruce. It's simple okay. to the point. He, he doesn't use too much jargon. He's right to the point, and he gives you plenty of exercise. One of the things mm-hmm. he points out, one of the things he points out is most of us fall asleep and do not go to sleep. So he'll teach you techniques on going to sleep. Which means, mm. which, which which initiates bringing consciousness into the astral world. 
So the more conscious you are in the astral world, as opposed to leaving your consciousness behind in the physical world as you fall asleep, um, you're bringing more awareness into that world. So, so the stuff that's happening won't happen fragmented or sporadically. You're more aware. And you eventually will get into something called lucid dreaming, meaning you'll be more aware of your dreams. So now if you're having future premonitions in your dreams, by mastering astral traveling or some form of mastery of astral traveling, you'll be able to control and maybe deal with some of those dreams as as information that you can use to guide your life. So the first thing okay. you have to do is build up the energy where you're aware in the dream world, and that always starts with astral traveling. And okay. in, even before that, it starts with meditation. So if you're not meditation, meditating, you may want a book on meditating because it, that shows you how to still and focus the mind. And then that same focus is what you're going to bring into the dream world or hold on to okay. the dream world. So you'll find a technique that helps with that. So this is really a matter of building up that power. See, what you, mm-hmm. what you, by your definition, you're telling me of a talent you have but you have to craft that talent. You have to uh, uh, work that talent. So, so okay. it sounds like you have a talent for it. Like uh, I tapped into that a while ago. I'm actually tapping into that future shit now. Like uh, it was crazy. I had a dream. I'm just dreaming about my boy Prince, my, my man, mm-hmm. not not the, not the singer, because that motherfucker with the blouse will never <laughs> meet up with me in the astral world. My boy Prince a lot, and um. And I, I called him on the, in the dream. I called him on the phone, said some lines, hung up. He called back and was like, uh, where the fuck is them lines from? And I'm like, yeah, I don't remember, but I remember you said that shit back in the day. On the da, 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 da. And I hung up uh-huh. in the dream. Um, immediately, he physically called me on the phone in, within, while I'm dreaming about having a conversation with him. So I pick up the phone. I'm like, Yo, what up? He's like, well, I said, yo, wasn't I just talking to you, motherfucker? You know what I'm saying? What the fuck was that? He's like, nah, I just called you. So I'm like, yo, I was just talking to you in the dream. So that shit was kind of wild. And then okay. there was another dream where there's this uh, uh, girl uh, who's cool. She actually, actually, Khadija knows her sister in them. And her sister in them met me online. And they're all conscious. But... Oddly enough, I got cooler with her sister. So she came, she barged in on my ass last Thanksgiving. And um, so I had a dream. I'm in my office with my drawers on. She barges in again with a dude. So got up, told her to watch this chick just come over. Sure enough, her whole goddamn family came over for pop. <laughs> Bars in. But they're they cool. They're, they're peoples. You know what I'm saying? So I was telling her, I, I knew she was going to come. So that future premonition. This, I had a dream mm-hmm. the other day that motherfucking uh, niggas put an eye light on me. I was pointing the shit out of them. And then I'm watching Riddick, and this bitch is putting an eye light on. So I'm like, I see that all the time. Like, oh, I just was dreaming about that. So it's there. The, the, the key is you could do enough work to, 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 to start controlling that. And, um, mm-hmm. and, and, making it work for you. You get what I'm saying? There's a yep. way to make it work for you in terms of premonition. But astral tra- mm-hmm. meditation, astral traveling is the pathway to start that process. Okay. <laughs> and then so one other thing. Oh, by Robert sorry. Bruce. No, sorry. Astral oh. Dynamics what? by Robert Bruce. Oh, Robert Bruce. Okay. And then one other thing I wanted to ask you about. Let me write this name down. Um because um, one thing that I noticed, like like you were talking about earlier, about how everything is going to go start going haywire for a lot of people, you know, mm-hmm. humans. <laughs> right. It, it used to be like that for me at first, mm-hmm. and I will always mm-hmm. be the type of person to be like, how come all this crazy stuff is going on? Like everything would always be going downhill. Like everything was mm-hmm. bad all the time. And then as I started on my, well, I've always been on my journey, but I'm just really understanding now what it is. Right. And uh, a lot of the stuff I was bringing on to myself by always thinking the negative aspect of it. So now I'm into the um, laws of attraction and things like that. Mm-hmm. And so I've been thinking better. But a lot of 
the stuff I'm dodging now or I'm finding that I'm able to, you know, not even have to deal with because I'm thinking better. You know, I, I right. really process what I put in. Like, I don't watch a lot of TV anymore because I used to have a lot of nightmares. And I'd be, like, watching Law & Order, like, dang, that happened for real. But so I just kind of got an idea on that. But basically, in my journey now, I'm at a point where I'm not all scattered about. And I and and I'm finding that every point I get to, I get stuck on it for like maybe a month or so, but then I'm I transition to the next step. Like I want to know more, I want to do more, and then so now I'm on my magic part, and I'm like I just feel like I'm just this is for me. Like this is something I forgot that I'm remembering now, and so I had sent you an email. I don't know if you know, but. Or remember me, but I sent you an email. It was really long, and he was like, okay, what's the question? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. If you send a long email, but, I'm not even going to I, okay. I won't even. I won't even tell no fairy tales. Just uh, <laughs> right down to the question. It's, I, it's like 100 emails waiting now. You know what I mean? Exactly. So I, it was about I, the I class. Wish I, could, I wish I could, but, you know. Well, it was about know, the actual to... classes. Yeah, because I wanted to do one of your classes, and I was just like, it was mm-hmm. real hard for me to. Yeah, but I'm a, I'm definitely well, going to well, get this. into the... Let me say this. Let me say this. Mm-hmm. Um, because you're conscious and becoming conscious and gaining more light, you're, while, while, while your life is getting better because you're going past human plight, human trauma. Now, mm-hmm. once you get to resonate on a certain level of consciousness, humanity does rear its, uh, its head every once in a while because you are having mm-hmm. a human experience. So what I what I was talking about is lately more people are uh, more conscious people are running into human experiences as a whole, as a standard, mm-hmm. as a standard based upon the tools of the trade, and, and it should be more than a, lo- a little bit more than laws of attraction. It should actually be the seven mm-hmm. laws of Tahuti. That's the more complete okay. understanding. The laws of attraction is a sub law of cause and effect. And okay. So really, so in other words, what where where the law of attraction comes from is something more greater. Now, the most okay. easiest way to access that is a document called the Kabbalion, which is actually from the Wisdom of Tehuti, the Seven Laws of Tehuti. Uh, mm-hmm. You get a book by Maya, the, uh, uh, I'll tell you the name of the book in one second. Uno momento, por favor. I'll just go get it. Right. It's, um, or you can get um, uh, Wayne's Chandler book, um, Future. Right. Wayne, or Wayne John Chandler. Bain's book, um, right, or John Bain's book, Sacred Science. Right. And Wayne Sacred Chandler, Science. Ain't, ain't the Future. Um, but one of the best I like because most people get their information from the source and the laws of attraction. This person that addresses it called the secret source. The law of attraction is one of the seven hermetic laws. Here are the other six by Maya D'Aust and Adam Parfrey. Why, why I recommend that book is because people who understand the laws of attraction, this book is built upon that, built upon okay. you having an understanding of that first because that's what people get got excited about and mm-hmm. – um, but as Aline pointed out, the books that he pointed out are excellent once you understand, once you get past that book. You understand mm-hmm. that there are many, many books that deal with the laws of Tehuti. Now, um, Wayne Chandler is an excellent book because he deals with it from our perspective, one of the best. Uh-huh. But uh, if, you're dealing, if, if, if you're trying to understand first with the laws of attraction, this one is usually a good one because it gives you a history and where the laws of attraction were carved out of the bigger picture. And then everything okay. and then everything else is that bigger picture once you get interested. So Maya D. D. Uh, Aust, M-A-J-A, last name D, apostrophe A-O-U-S-T. Wait, did you so, say that um, last name again? Um, D, apostrophe A-O-U-S-T, and her co-author Adam Parfrey, P-A-R-F-R-E-Y. But like okay. I said, there's plenty of there's plenty of books on it, and like I said the most easiest obtainable free document is the Kabbalion, which you can just download online. 
Now, okay. now, now, once you have a, a holistic understanding of the laws of the universe, you can definitely work your life better. Um, in okay. fact, I did a whole chapter in, in my book that's, that's, I swear to you, which is coming, about the laws of attraction. and birth. It's one of the things I deal with in class, actually, about the seven laws of Tehuti is one of the lessons. So that's how mm-hmm. detail I go. That's how detail I go into it. And you know, Wayne's one of the books I recommend as well. Um, okay. So what you so as a conscious person, as a conscious person, you will uh, uh, notice just by doing conscious work that your life in general becomes better. Because when you're ignorant, what you have is life mastering you. So when you do things like even just the law of attraction or any magical ritual, candle magic, crystal work, uh, fairy work, uh, altar work, any of these things on this long list, what you're doing is just taking a step to control your life. What, you, what, what you've been calling coincidence and shit that just happened, you are now taking control of. So that's why your life is getting better. But within that with within that plateau of energy that you reach, there's still always uh humanity that's gonna show you its ass. The idea okay. is can you can you uh overcome it or can or do you have something in your arsenal to uh do you have something in your arsenal to uh uh to uh to combat what's 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 coming down the pipe. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Without imploding, you know what I'm saying? Because, shit, I had to pull out every goddamn thing I know for my goddamn stepchildren. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, if we talk about it enough, y'all might just hear me go downstairs and choke the shit out of them. And that's just one of them. <laughs> I, yeah, that's I understand. One of them. That's just one of them. And, um, okay. and, uh, and he's the good one. Like, um... <laughs> Like uh, so so it, you just gotta you just gotta know you just gotta have things to do. You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. to combat them as a conscious person. So it's it's okay. really about more gaining more and more technique. Okay. But then you'll find one thing that you ha- you'll have a uh, extra a, a, a real talent for, and you'll probably it'll probably be your main thing. You get what I'm saying. Okay. At one point, it was candle magic for me, then I moved on, crystal work. I was mm-hmm. oil man for a minute. Everything had to have oils on it. It's just that you just okay. keep going. Okay. And that's, I mean, and from um, some of your uh, shows with Lady Blue, I learned about crystals and then the other kind of, you know, different kinds of magic you could do and the altars. Mm-hmm. And so I did a lot of that already. Not mm-hmm. all the way down to the point where I'm mastering it, but I'm starting to get the books that you have listed mm-hmm. on a couple of the shows. And so yeah. the, the ones I have now mm-hmm. um, are the ones by Barbara Walker, the Woman's oh, Encyclopedia, excellent. that one. Excellent. And then I got the Money. sacred, those symbols of sacred uh, objects from her. Yeah, very, so very I'm good. with those because I'm not familiar with everything, so I figured that would help remind me oh, yeah, that's, better. That's probably the best, especially if you start okay. anything with, uh, symbols, uh, encyclopedias, dictionaries, and all of those things are always perfect to build your library. Um, mm-hmm. um, and, and her in particular for a woman is probably one of the best series you can have. Barbara, Barbara G. Walker, um, she really she really does hard, good research, you okay. know, on, 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 the fe- on the divine feminine and not even... It's not even uh, tilted where it's like boys against the girls. It's like some real, real hardcore shit of understanding okay. about the feminine energy. So it's okay. definitely a good, uh, definitely a must in your library for any woman. It's a, it's a must in your oh. library for any body, but a woman mm-hmm. definitely is definitely empowering okay. books. You know, when she tells you about the science of the word cunt and the science of the word bitch, it was all good mm-hmm. news. Was all compliments at one point. That's what I'm finding. Right. So, you know, okay. excellent, excellent book. Okay. Uh, well, I appreciate all the information and just the, the you guys taking the calls and being there. So 
Um, no problem. I'd like to thank you all very much. I can't believe I was calling number one. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for coming to me. Huh? Right, we appreciate you. Thank you. All no right. problem. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys as well. All right. All right. Yes. We got area code 678. Area code 678. You're on the air. Area code 678. Atlanta, where are you at? All right, we're going to go to 512. Area code 512, you're on the line. Yo, peace, peace, brother Aleem, peace, brother Panic. This peace. Is, uh, peace, peace. This is brother Michael. Yeah, it's been a minute. Peace, oh, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to say... um Brother Panic, I just had, like, um, two questions. It's like, one was, uh, I hope you got my payment. <laughs> well, for, you sent it. For, like, sure earth pack. I'm, okay. I'm sure of it. Okay. Well, yeah, like, basically, you know, I, I've been on the shaman path, or that's what I'm finding out, like, more and more, like, I could have, you know, came here to to do that, or many people could have came here to become that. But I was wondering, as far as the herb pack, do you feel that would be, like, an excellent tool as far as as becoming one? Well, the herb pack does, does one thing and one thing only. It helps to open up the pine needle. So, so, absolutely, absolutely, and for different strokes for different folks. Like I said, what I've noticed over the years of selling the herb pack that some people meditation gets better, sleep gets better, focus gets better, chats get better, uh, uh, or the chatter in their mind when they meditate gets better. I mean, and there's probably ten other things that people have told me over the years. So the only thing I can say is once you smoke it, you can see what happens. Right. What is what is clear, you will have an effect in your pineal. Mm. So if you have a goal of being a shaman, shaman then, uh, you know, two, two things. You wouldn't need an herb pack because what you just got finished saying is I, that's why you came to the planet. So you damn sure didn't come to the planet to get a goddamn herb pack so your life could begin. <laughs> but will it help? Will it help out? I believe it will. It cannot. It cannot hurt you. Gotcha. None of it is drugs. Um, the only the only warning is if you're if you're breastfeeding, do not take it. Or you know what I mean. So, uh, one of the ingredients is too much for a baby. Other than that, piss test. None of it is drugs. None of it gets you high. It is all basically vitamins for the pineal gland. You can smoke it. If if you if you don't if you're not a smoker, you can also make it as a tea and get your sip on. And like I said, whatever your agenda is in terms of mental focus, it can only act as a battery for something that's already inside of you. So it doesn't do anything for you but help whatever it is you're trying to do. So if that's what you're trying to do. I can see nothing. It do nothing. It doing nothing but helping you. Is that right if I ask one more question? Is that cool or? Sure, that's fine. I just said, um, well, basically, like, this work, like, all that, I, I mean, I really love that book um, that you suggested, Darkness Visible. So, mm-hmm. like, I darken my room and and everything because I really want to have that experience, but not to mm-hmm. the extremity of, like, you know, being in the dark for that many days. Right, right. But I was wondering, like, how does that process, I mean, I see how it kind of starts, but, like, how long would you say you would need to be in darkness, you see? Didn't you read the book? Yeah. Yeah, but I was, I was saying if you, if you didn't want to go that extreme. Is either that extreme or is not, based upon that book. The book is doing one and one thing only. It's telling you 
is telling you about a particular initiation ritual of darkness. So you, you is 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 no halfway for that book. But if you just want to be in darkness and have melatonin run, do it until you feel something. You know, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. You know what I mean? Do it until you feel something. But if you're doing what the if you're doing or you're trying to accomplish what's said in that book, then he'll tell you the days in that book. But if well, I was I was to, doing it. Yeah, I was doing it to accomplish uh, the penaline or you know that DMD molecule. That's darkness, darkness, darkness uh, uh, starts melatonin flow. So research it and see. You know what I mean? How I don't know. I don't. I don't keep numbers like that on in my head because I don't have. Right. To, you know, I'm not doing it. So something you should just go online and look up. Okay. See what it says. Well, see what the book says. Well, I appreciate that so much, brother, and I'm glad to, you know, get an herb pack for the holidays and everything. So I appreciate All right. that, yo. Yeah. All, All right, so you take it easy, brother. Mailing out soon. All right, bro. All right, peace. All right, you're going to area code 909. Area code 909, you're on the line. Area code 909. All right, we're going to area code 386. Area code 386, you're on the line. Peace. Peace. Uh, 4,400, man. That's Did a magnificent joint. I loved it. Yeah. I, I was so yeah, mad. Yeah, yeah. I was so mad there wasn't, like, an ending. It needed to keep yeah. going. Yeah, it was a sucky, a sucky ending. But, and that's 100%. Do you remember the episode that I'm talking was talking about? I watched them very well. I watched them twice just because it was so. It was the only thing I could watch on Netflix, really. Mhm, mhm. So yeah, yeah that's 100. percent Yeah, that's great, Ron Martin shit. Yeah, it's easy all day. Yeah, and they made him a right. They made him a Jesus, and and they were following yeah. him because remember, um, they need. See, so you say, well, what is Trayvon Martin for? I mean, primarily, there's, there's, we know there's no Jesus coming back, but they have, so they have to keep on giving us substitutes. So, so they have, they have to keep murdering us to give mm-hmm. you something to, to raise up. So they have to keep exactly. crucifying. So I'm gonna do Diallo and, and, and Sean Bell, and it, it's a part of the same program. So mm-hmm. in, in, on the 4400, basically without murdering the kid, they just made him a Christ figure with that hoodie mm-hmm. and shit. Just made him a Christ figure. And uh, really that's all Trayvon Martin is, a Christ figure. Because if there is no Christ figure, you, what point do niggers sit around and go, uh, wait a minute, I, maybe Jesus ain't coming back. So, But if you keep seeing the template over and over, you know what I'm saying, if you've seen the uh, uh, Soul Train Awards, the way they even just paused for Trayvon's mother, it was like she was married or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. We care. We care and all of this shit. It's like, yeah, we care, but you know we don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. we just care because it's like, it's exactly what we said it was. It could have been my son. Oh, uh, it's just something to do. Like I, I live so close to the area, man. Like I mean, real mm-hmm. close. And um, uh-huh. it, 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 they back, you know, this backup party. And like, I was just at a really big event in the same area uh-huh. not too long ago. And like, I couldn't. It was my first time really like back out in the public in a way. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like at night, at night. And so, I couldn't even believe my eyes. Just like, regular shit again. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. I mean, it's over. Like, um, you know, remember it was all Sean Bell? Niggas don't even remember his name. Oh, Sean Bell. <laughs> yeah, it, look, it's social engineering. But like I said, mm-hmm. all right, let's say we know that and it's too complex. And hands down, when you watch this episode, it's like, wow. They, mm-hmm. It's the whole thing. It's like, it's like you hear, you see the storyline. Some shit that's about to happen in the future. 
It's exactly. like it's right off the of t- is right off the of TV. It's not even like it's right off. Yeah. Remember when they all put on them hoods like I am Graham Walker, whatever his name was. And I'm sitting there like, oh wow, they they really. I'm sitting there going, I can't believe this shit is happening. This is too easy. And that was an old series so, too. Yeah, it was the whole series. The whole series is actually pretty good, and it's a cult. Remember they did the whole Necronomicon. Uh, mm-hmm. They did the in the mouth of madness. With uh, uh, the, they did a yeah. whole uh, uh, what's his name, um, Love story. Yeah, you know, there's you know a lot. I mean? There's a lot of good joints on Netflix though. Like, it it almost seems like in some a lot of I, I watched a lot of movies off there, and it just seems mm-hmm. like like I for instance in Judge Dredd, the, the newest one. There's right. like just a lot of scenes dealing with telepathy or some sort of some sort of mind play. Mm-hmm. I mean, but and, um, this year they're doing on TV is. It's the season of the witch. So everything is gotcha. the witch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Um, there's, yeah. there's, but there's a thousand witch shows, including the one with Angela Bassett, which was turned to be really corny. And, and, and you know, she's so corny. Because she, she, she invoked Marie Laveau. Marie Laveau came through. Mm-hmm. She came through mm-hmm. Khadija. And see, Khadija will get these channels and don't know who the person is. Like right, so, I know right, that she's right. gonna be bullshit. She'd be like, "Yo, who, who, who's Marie Laveau?" That type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Wow, yeah, yeah. Like, who's yeah. Marie Laveau? I'm like, "Oh, you don't know who that is." Yeah, I think I right. heard the name, but I heard Angela Bassett. And she came through and there's this witch, and she showed me this and did that and this that. And we was doing this, and I'll give her the books afterwards. And um, oh yeah, but then I'm watching this, then at the same time, Angela Bassett is putting it down. Mm-hmm. Motherfucker, she do that fucking nativity bullshit just to say sorry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just threw my whole shit off. Like, um, cause uh, she, uh, you know, she's a big time Christian, Denzel too. Yeah. And uh, so she she said, "Let me go say sorry for being a witch." Now she in the church singing with Mary J. Blige, you know. But she was putting it down in the beginning, but now I, I lost interest in the shit. And there was a couple mm-hmm. other witch shows that, that was out Khadija was watching. So I'm like, okay, they they crump, crumping this witch shit up. So I've seen them universally uh, get into these trends all the time. Uh, Netflix's uh, documentaries are, are badass. There's another, my uh, man, Brother Shabazz from New York, told me to watch something on Netflix called Death. And it's about... Yeah. Uh, uh, a black grand a punk rock band. Where was they from? Um, yeah, yeah. Philly, yeah. Philly or some shit. So even the punk rock motherfuckers, niggas started that shit. Punk rock. All of it. Yep. Yeah. All of yeah. it. Yeah. They they show that shit straight up. All the niggas, the Pesh Mode and all the motherfuckers, kings of punk rock. Like yeah, we got it from death. A mm-hmm. bunch of niggas. Half the uh, niggas actually, still alive. Regular dread niggas. Punk rock. I'm like, y'all niggas ain't got, y'all white niggas ain't got nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Even punk rockers out. So you can find a lot of shit on Netflix. You must watch this Kamari shit. It is fucking mind blowing. Yeah, I got you. Mind blowing. You I got to watch that. it. This nigga said, look, I, I, he said, I just want to see if I can start a religion. Niggas walking around with a big <laughs> own time. Fucking these niggas uh, had them doing dumb shit. And they was just doing it. See the blue light? He was making them chant shit like, I am a fake bullshitter. And these niggas was doing that shit. He said, basically, I'm telling them I'm a fake. Crazy. It's crazy. You got to watch it. But, but like I said, in the end, it's like he had the realization because he still changed their lives, even with the bullshit. But I said, I get it. It, it, these people change their lives through that system. It, it has nothing to do with what's real, what's fake. This is the illusionary yeah. world. So w- saying Jesus, Mary, or whatever is their belief in in whatever is or their faith is what's getting them through it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they saying, only oh, stepping up a little, a little piece of something what they got. Right. But, you, you know, this is all with no black people stuff for this shit. This is all white people. So I'm saying yeah. just the human mind within itself, if they if um whatever you choose to buy into is gonna become a reality. 
Yeah. See, this is it, which seems on one level, if you were using logic, it seems stupid and scary, and you could be easily pimped. But on the other hand, it is actually a high science because once you understand the mind can be manipulated into any reality, it's then, the it's, then you then you at a point where you can create whatever fucking reality you desire. It's, it's not the whole shit there idea is. of mythology, magic, and and. and in, in black power, you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. See, and then it makes so much sense why we're being fed thousands of hours of bullshit information. Thousands. Thousands. Of bullshit, of constant bullshit information because because it is dictating our reality. The Illuminati is going to do that. Chemtrails are going to do that. Your food is going to do that. You fell for it. Mm-hmm. See, if you believe that eating high fructose corn syrup is going to cause you a stroke, guess what? Why do you think you got a stroke? And why do you think the next man who eat just as much or twice as much did not? In other words, how come a stroke or a heart attack or lung failure or whatever isn't absolute? You give them some? Uh, yeah, yeah, I got you. One, one man who's smoking and the other man. One man, believes, one man believes he's going to get it. One man believes nothing could happen to him. Mm-hmm. You, you, can I share a quick a quick story just to sure. dovetail off that? Um, I, uh, I I do a side gig every every season here and there uh, as a CNA, depending if it's the right client. And um, mm-hmm. I had one, I had one that um, had, I had I had uh, one one patient that had dementia, and like the worst case of it. So not talking, nothing. You know what I mean? Ex ex jazz player like used to play with Miles Davis and, and all them guys. Mm-hmm. So basically, the son was like ex like ex Harvard psychologist and whatnot. So everyone's very educated. Everyone's you know it's like a case study going on the man, et cetera. Like you know, like Harvard Harvard uh, medical journal type shit. Like he wants to get it published, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Anyways, dude ended up like. Really, really, really being into James Brown. He was like a ex James Brown impersonator or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And so it would just always be coming through. He always be telling me, like, put, just put the whole album on for James Brown. I would basically be, we'd be talking all the time. He, he'd tell me mm-hmm. what to get and when to get it. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. he don't talk to nobody else. I mean, he ain't, you know, vibrating. He's just talking. Like, you know, I, eyes. And so, mm-hmm. that's just an example, I think, of just things that you get from, like, I, I was in the, the second season class, and so mm-hmm. the shit just, like, you know, it just turns a, a completely different lens on on what you're looking at, man. Oh, what's your and name? The, and, the, and the shit is fire. Fire. Michael Pratt, you need to get in the class, bro. <laughs> oh. uh, uh, who, 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 who am I speaking to now? My name is David Michael. Um, you was in the class? I, I was in your second season, yeah. Okay, okay. That's a while now. I, th- I yeah, vaguely yeah, that, remember yeah. the name. I vaguely remember yeah. the name, but because now cause we have to season, we have to more than 10. But I, oh, I, yeah, I, I, I know you're going through it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just, I just okay. want for people on the line that, like the girl who tuned in, you definitely should just go do that instead of it just puts you puts you on through. Well, yeah, you know, oh, yeah. It's, what you're trying it's a big to do. deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. It gets you to the next level. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm gonna make them over there. All of them. They all. Everyone on the. I lean all. Everyone's at a damn mystery school, and the people don't see it. Like them, say, you know, that's the shit that's going on in my opinion. Right. After looking right. at everything. You know. Oh yeah, I'm saying I'm feeling you. I'm feeling you. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, kid. So I would say definitely stay on these documentaries in that place. Them shits right there, boy. Them shits is. Them shits. Yeah, they good. That's, that's 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 where it's at. I mean, I like you know I watch you know I'm, I'm a TV buff. <laughs> uh, I got a yeah, movie collection. And, um, mm-hmm. You know, but them, them, them documentaries is doing it, kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah, on point. 
All right, kid. All right, y'all. Thanks for the yeah, shout man. out. Yeah, man. Yeah. Love All you, right. Man. All right, appreciate Thank that, brother. Appreciate you coming on, sharing that with us. And uh, let's go back to the phone lines. We're going to go to area code 00, no, 404, 404, you on the line. Yo, yo, hello. Hey, Hello. What up? Yeah, Peace, we got you. Oh, I had a feeling I was going to be next. What, what's going on, everybody? Y'all good? What's up, man? Yeah, we good. This, this is uh, JB calling from Atlanta, man. All right. All right. What up? Oh, uh, man, I got my questions lined up. Um, let me see. Uh, I, I guess I wanted to know, man, what, um, like, what are some good tools, like, uh, for grounding or balancing, like, when you're dealing with that, when you're dealing with the Kundalini, when it's, you know what I'm saying? Uh, where, where you at in Atlanta? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm on the west side. I'm on Bankhead. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but to, um, to I really, mean, like, to raise like really, the, not to um, go too deep in or or whatever. Is like, is it's been kicking up in me since like I'm 35 now, right? So mm-hmm. it's been kicking up, man, since like 19, I say, since I was 19, and and um, you know, my partner, uh, one of my partners, I do music. He turned me on to. You know the whole, all the the conscious taste, Bobby Hammond and Phil and all them. So it's been a constant, you know, a constant uh, studying kind of thing. But um, it's like I didn't really like I went through the whole nine with the, you know, the psychiatry, the medication, all that, right? And um, just here lately, you know, what I did was I just, I guess hindsight being twenty twenty, you know, and. And all the studying, it, it, it all kind of came full circle, and um, I just, you know, I I just kind of, I just kind of went with the flow on it. But I guess my question is like, um, just some good tools you may, you know, some good books, or I've been on the net, I've been kind of experimenting with, you know, the diet. You know, I'm hungry as hell, eating chicken and. Lots of chicken and lots of potatoes and just, you know, experiment mm-hmm. with stuff I wouldn't usually eat, like fried foods mm-hmm. and fried potatoes and just, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But it's like, I don't know, I just, I, I I guess I was calling to get some tools from you. Like, what you what you suggest as far as grounding, kind of staying balanced and, okay. you know, because the shit will get overwhelming, you know what I'm saying, for me sometimes. All right, the first thing you need to do is make sure you read because uh, as, I, as I pulled out earlier, um, you got to look at what you're doing is electricity. Electricity? So this, right. Okay, this okay, hold on. I'm right. but, okay. Go ahead. These spirits, these spirits are nothing but electricity. So, okay. So if you get past good or evil, you know what I'm saying, that bad or good spirit can do anything, if you can get... If you're grown enough or mature enough to get past that, then mm-hmm. you will understand, like, like electricity, there's ways to access and use it. Okay. And there's ways you don't. You don't, you don't use a radio in the bathtub, you know what I'm saying? Right. So you, 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 you don't stick a fork in the light socket. So That's by right. reading and understanding some basic understandings about spiritual work, that, mm-hmm. that, that, that should give you a confidence that you can – uh, uh, on in terms of what you can take on, so you okay. must you must educate yourself. That's number one. Okay. If you need if you need books, I, um, just email me. I've done a whole entire shows where I've just given out nothing but books. So I, hey man, I've been I've been like listening. Li- I, I listen to both of the Kundalini Awakenings on the one you did. I I mean that's all I do really is is just research okay. research. Re- I actually sent you an email. Um, and kind of, I was trying to make sure that you read it because I know in past shows you like, hey, man, y'all y'all cut so that was, shit out with all long. that. It was too long. It was too long. I I just go. I hate okay, to sound okay. like a snob, but it's just so I got many you. people that 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 have so many issues. I just don't. I, I barely have time to even send out packages that people pay for. So uh, I got you. I feel that. I feel that. Well, go ahead though. You said it. They always kick my ass about that. Right. Right. So. All right, so let's say you got that research part down. Um, then yeah. you just need physical tools. 
if your kundalini, because if I'm understanding the question, is exploding mm. and you're very excited, you're trying to calm yourself, <coughs> the first thing you want to do is get crystals. Crystals, okay. Get, get certain books on crystals. Uh, you want to get uh, a kaleidoscope of crystals um, by uh, an author named Melody or the Crystal Bible. Okay. I don't know who, but it's, it's such a standard book. All you have to do is look up the Crystal Bible or any encyclopedia on crystals, but the one by Melanie, the author, A Kaleidoscope of Crystals, is is pretty, really, really complete. And in it, Melody. it'll say, yeah, that's the author's name, just Melody. Okay. And um, it's pretty, it's a, it's a standard book, so it shouldn't be hard. By just, by, by Googling that, you'll be able to find it. Okay. Now, in that book, um, usually crystal stores, white people get with so there's, I know there's crystals. You get, you're from Atlanta, Phoenix mm-hmm. and Dragon. Right. You go to Phoenix and Dragon out here, and I'm mm-hmm. sure there's another place. Your second uh, choice would be to find some online, but Phoenix and Dragon is just as easy. And exactly. once you get there, you you can find some of the crystals you need that help ground you. Okay. And, or if you need more energy, uh, it'll give you more energy. Um. You need to figure out some sort of meditation. So I don't know if you're saying you want to raise Kundalini. No. So you have no, a lot of energy. I, yeah, what I'm saying is, is like, I, okay, let, let me let me let me give you like be more specific. Um, you know, I had the pressure in my head. Like basically, when I was real young, I was into you know just regular shit, smoking weed and and drinking, and then you know I had the pressure in my head at the point. I didn't know what it was. So then, you know, they, you know, they, it was the whole doctor thing. They took me to the doctor and she put me on the medication. And, you know, they hit me with the, you know, they hit me with the, yeah, you got to take this for the rest of your life line. So I'm mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm like, okay. And then the more, you know, when, when, when my, uh, my, my buddy introduced me to, you know, just the, you know, the, the whole Bobby Hammett and, just the, all the all everything that was going on in this was in ninety eight okay mm-hmm. so then mm-hmm. okay, so then you know, like what I did was just after studying and experimenting, and you know I got the um one thing that that, that helped me a lot was the 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 uh the the basic magic by Phil cooper mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. that one right there helped me to realize okay this is this is really, you know, this is some mind stuff. So anyway, yeah, right. To to fast forward a little bit, um, what I start doing was I start kind of um just to build confidence because at cause at times at at certain times within the period, what I would do is I would say, man, fuck it, I, I'm not taking it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not taking this for the rest of my life. So mm-hmm. I would get off of it, and then you know the pressure would come back, and then what? What I what I just found out was that the medication, and then something that even Bobby said was the medication shuts down the melanin. So uh-huh. then I'm like, okay, so the just correlating or whatever. Um, what I did was, oh no, no, what I was going to say was I, I I read somewhere else that, um, I think this was on the net. They were saying that when you're on the medication, it stops the process where it's at. It kind of freezes it. So anyway, years go by, years go by, whatever. This is, you know, constant. This is like in and out of hospitals a couple times. So then what I did this last time, which was maybe a couple, I'm going to say about three, four months ago, what I did was, well, before that, a year ahead of these three months, what I did was kind of just peed it off of it. I I, I cut cut the doses of the medication, and then... When I, you know what I mean, when I stopped, then stopped totally, what happened was there's the pressure in the head. But at this point, I'm understanding what's going on. So I just kind of fought through it. It wasn't, and it wasn't even as intense as, you know, before. So anyway, um, me, I just kind of. Let me say this. Let me say go this. Ahead. That medicine does not stop the melanin. First of all, you wouldn't be here if it did. Um, right, okay. Why would you be conscious? So, uh, his, his job is to try to stop the melanin, but the melanin adapts. Okay, cool, okay. So, you can get that off your mind. 
Okay. And, um, you wouldn't be, we wouldn't be having this conversation. You would be just, you would just say, you know something, I think Jesus is the way. Exactly. And that's where you would have been. So it, it's not stopping nothing. Okay. Making it harder, I'm sure. I'm making it harder, I'm sure, but I don't think it's harder than you think. You sound conscious to me. Now mm-hmm. You're reading to me. Right. So like I, said, I just think you just need um, maybe tools to, to start with the mood. And what, what hits the mood is meditations, crystals, okay. um, and really dealing with spirits. How much spirits do you deal with? Now, that's that's something that has always been, uh, that's like been the, you know, the uh, the part that I haven't I haven't delved into yet. You know what I mean? It's It's been in more. My, in ahead. my world, that's the part to dive into. Okay, so got you. The spirits are, are, and Bobby Hemmings said it, formulas. Mm-hmm. Each of these, each, look at the spirit as this, like a, uh, First of all, there are things here that are tangible. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Your phone, your pen, your your pencil, your 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 computer, a light, a speaker. These are tangible and they have a purpose. Mm-hmm. Your speaker has a purpose to emit sound. Your pen has a purpose or an energy or a job to write. Okay. Now, there are energies that have a purpose that cannot be uh so easily defined. Okay. So, but we still we we still need to access those energies or those right. invisible energies or those non tangible energies. Those energies are spirits. So, okay. what our genius black folks did back in the day said, for these intangible energies, we need to give it names, and we need to give them characters. We need to give them a story. We need to have them interplay with each other and call it a mythology. That's, that's why, yeah, can, okay, go ahead. That's how we can take intangible energies and give the normal human being access to energies that they can use for purposes that are, that go beyond just a pen, paper, <coughs> speaker, light, so on and so forth. So you say Hanneman, Osiris, Oshun, uh, uh, uh a whole long list of whatever deities, and once they have a color, story, a day, uh, a, a, a mood, a feeling, a mythology, what you did mm-hmm. was take something intangible, made it tangible in a way to access it. So, primarily for healing. So healing, you can healing. There's no nothing tangible for it. We try with medicine. But we have, but the ancients called it Baba Luaye, let's just say, in this particular case, and later on St. Lazarus. So we understood by getting this non-tangible understanding of healing call that we now labeled as Baba Luaye or St. Lazarus, we needed an image for. So he has an image. He's on a crutch. He has two dogs. He has a story. He has a statue. So now by bringing this stuff into your house, you're taking something that's non-touchable non-tangible, non-explainable, and now you have a way to explain it as a formula, as medicine, as medicine. So okay. you, so the key is to understand these spirits and understand the nature of these invisible spirits, get past the fact that they're bad or good, like the devil and Jesus. Exactly, and exactly. Get, and, and get down to can can you use them or can you not use them? Do they work for your cause and, and, and not for your cause? And then you get them around them. Then there's methodologies for accessing this intangible energy. As a statue, as a picture, you 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 the 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 act of pouring the, or the act of symbology of pouring a libation or giving them a sacrifice in the form of libation is you give them something, they give you something. You talk to it as well, if it is something human because what you're doing is trying to invoke Yes. I was just saying a good example of that is um Oh, watching, oh yeah, yeah. Um, um, I love Lucy. Yeah. Um, you see Ricky Ricardo uh, always calling on Baba Lou like, yeah. Okay. Right, always calling on Baba Lou like, yeah. And he was talking, right, and he was talking oh, about Oh, man, the yeah, okay. He was talking yeah, about the I know what you're talking about. Play, I remember that, yeah. Tell you something about that. Baba Lou like, sits over paralysis. And there was a sister who had a son who got paralyzed, who was conscious. So she was going through the community for help, 
and and eventually me and her paths crossed. And um, so we were doing channels. A lot of stuff came through for her. And Baba Luaye started to come through. Now, this would happen in the vision. I, I, at this point, this is when everybody was in my dream. She was okay. actually mad. She wasn't showing up in my dream. Now, right. now, the one night she did show up, it was me and me and Bobby standing there. And I'm looking at her Akashic records. And they were Native American, and she was married to this guy. And mm. there was a curse put on him. And through each lifetime, they would be together, but there would be some misery that would befall him. So in this particular life, he was a son who got paralyzed. Mm. So they told me that he would never walk in his life again. But I can break the curse. I would have to get with her father, Baba Luaye, and she would not remember this. So now in the dream, I go and sit with her, and I'm telling her, look, you need to remember me. When I come out, you need to listen to everything I'm going to tell you. She's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And she was just that that kind of person, too. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm like, look, just listen to me, and I'm going to talk to your father. Remember Ricky Ricardo. Remember Ricky Ricardo. And she's like, what the fuck is that? She said, well, talk to my father. And the classic Baba Luaye, the African one, came out, not not the St. Lazarus with the veiled face. Okay. So I remember telling them what was going on, and I was talking to them in a the monotone voice. I'm going to come back. I'm going to do that. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Bobby sitting around jumping up and down near, near me. So I woke up, couldn't figure. Now, right now I'm making it easy, but I couldn't figure out this fucking dream for nothing. Okay. Until I put the Ricky Ricardo chef. <clears throat> oh, that was fucking Baba Luaye that I was talking to. And she was mm. trying to get us. I got her the Baba Lua State statue, did what we needed to do, so on and so forth. And he told me the curse was broken. He still, you know, he's not going to walk in this lifetime, but they no longer will go through this again. So, so I mean, these deities work as formulas now. You know what I'm saying? Okay. The deities work as formulas. So you're taking, like I said, the intangible, you're taking something that is undefinable or so-called undefinable or hard to define, and you're giving mm-hmm. it a definition by giving it a character. You're giving it, when you when you characterize it, you give it a way to access it. You get what I'm saying? So, right, right. So not to invoke life into this energy, you do the same thing you naturally did when you was a child. When you had your uh, uh, when your sister had her dolls, or when you had your action figures and took them in the tub and shit with you, you made this shit real. You know what I'm saying? You, right. you know, you thought this shit was real. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna front. I had a monkey. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. I yeah. Yeah. Monkey. I used to walk around. I used to walk around the hood. Walk around the hood with with, with Clarence. Uh, Clarence the monkey. You know? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I was hurt, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When, when yeah. Clarence, I knew they threw that nigga away, but I was looking like, where the fuck did Clarence go? He must have been back in the jungle. I'm like, no, you threw that shit away. Like, when I grew up, I was like, this nigga threw that shit down the cellar. But, you know, he must have right. went, went back to the jungle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Clarence ain't going to the jungle. <laughs> so I had to walk around with Clarence the monkey, and I thought that this shit nigga was real. Clarence. You know what I'm saying? Right. But then I got then I got Peter the train conductor. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck him, fucked him right up. You know what I'm saying? Fuck him right, right. right. Peter the train conductor had a okay. it was a, it was a bear with a train suit on. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So all I should say, like, but you you I made it real. You know what I'm saying? You invoke life in into this inanimate object. So you yeah, do I, the same thing now with with with, with the deities and the spirit. That's why you okay. talk about them as if they, see, that's where we got it confused. So we talk about Obatala like he's alive. Now niggas really think he's alive. Obatala is going to be mad at you. Right. You know, you, that, that's almost like saying fucking G.I. Joe or anybody. Yeah. Right. Like, G.I. Joe is going to be mad at you. Yeah. <laughs> like Clarence is going to be mad at you. It's like, it's right. like, yeah and no. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. he's not really can't do nothing, but you know, well, I'm still going to respect my monkey, Clarence. I'm not gonna keep him on. The, well, I kept him on the floor, but you know that was that. Like, why you got Clarence on the floor like that? Put him on the bed. 
It's right, like, right, right, right. He's mad, but he ain't really mad. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. like you're saying he's mad because you, you propose that he's mad in your mind because right, you want to be mad. That's your interpretation. You okay, okay. It's your interpretation. So mm-hmm. now that's that's what you have with people with Obatala and Oshun is your fucking interpretation of Oshun being mad. It's okay. like it's not working for you because you're using the energy wrong. You're plugging the microwave into a car battery. And it's like, well, how come Oshun is not working? She's mad. You know, fucking mad. You're just doing it wrong. You don't have enough information or you using or you on some old technology shit. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Okay. So, so the idea of dealing with spirits is there's a spirit with an emotion that is linked to anything that you can possibly think of or anything you could possibly need. If you're having head issues, that's Obatala sits over the head. So on it, I, would, go ahead. I would deal with Obatala and mm. see what happens or something of the such. You know what I'm okay. saying? Just, just okay. to see what happens. So, because if you're trying to wean yourself off of medicine, you might as well do it with the help of some invisible energy as well if you're going to do it anyway. Why do it and just go raw dog, do it and invoke some energy? Right. And, I mean, at this point, I'm confident, like, based on, just based on the information and based on, I'm not worried about the medicine, but, like, with the spirits, I was always confused and I never, like, with the different mythologies and names, it, to me it was kind of like, synonymous to trying to decode the Bible kind of thing. Like, I never read the Bible either because it's mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. it's just too, you know what I'm saying? It's too like, confusing, so that's why I never right. touched the spirit stuff. But, yeah, I got you. I got you. Right, right. See, see it's, it's been promoted with uh, logic. Like right. See, that's, that's exactly what I was talking about earlier about the science of logic. See, if mm-hmm. I look at it logically, it seems like a thousand spirits. But if, if if I show you that you were doing it anyway with Clarence the monkey, right? I, I, we ain't said nothing here. You get what I'm saying? Is that all because the fear, you, all the doubt, all, all that's the fear, out the window? Right. Okay. Because you're doing it a certain way, and you're gonna offend some shit. Exactly. Now, see, it becomes offensive if you're following a culture, and it should mm-hmm. be. So, for instance, if Baba Luaya is a part of a culture, and it becomes. Uh, uh, a system or becomes a uh, uh, tradition to deal with him a certain way, then it is disrespectful to put him on the floor when he's not supposed to be on the floor if culture dictates. Okay. You get what I'm saying? But if a scientist dictates, you can do anything. You need to, right. So it's okay. about levels. It's not about right or wrong. It's about levels. If 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 it, what I'm saying is solid, if, if you want to be – in an initi- initiatory system, into a, in, in, or in a scary system of uh, uh, I can't do this and I can't do that. That's what it is. You you're saying what it is. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that on Tuesday. I can't do that because it's not a full moon. You that's what you're telling me. You ain't telling me nothing hot. That's you're telling me what you can't do. You are telling right. me you're powerless. That's all. You're just telling okay. me you're powerless. That's mm-hmm. all you're doing. Well, I'm trying. Well, I'm trying to tell you that you can tap into ultimate power. I thought you were God. I right. Do what the fuck you want to do. Right. Do what you want to do. Do it thou wilt. You know what I'm right. saying? Do it the, the fuck thou wilt. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. Uh, 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 yours or his. This is just. It's like saying electricity is mine. It's right. Not. It's not. It's just coming to your house right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, um, there's a story. That 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 tour guide from from the pyramids thinks he built the shit. A Wasi or whatever his name is. He's touring and he. Oh, Beyonce, story. go ahead. Yeah, Just read he, that today. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's touring and um, he's mad that Beyonce didn't say sorry for being late. Motherfucker, you the help. You know what I'm saying? You the help. You know what I'm She's so rude, and I'll never <laughs> keep on the thing. It ain't yours, nigga. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, how dare she just come and, motherfucker, that ain't yours, Wasi. Right, you know that's amazing. I just read that today. Just saw that. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> like that shit is somehow his. Right, right. Like, fucking Imhotep is shaking his head at Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So I'm sitting okay. there like, I'm like, man, you know, it's the arrogance 
of this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She came in late and didn't say thank you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Hey, nigga, fuck you, nigga. You are a tour guide. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm sure. I'm sure you didn't pay her to come. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I'm sure she cut you a check to come. <laughs> like some shit that she should have went with crazy. <laughs> <laughs> She just took her ass over there with crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 So, so I, mean, so, I mean, all I have to say is like, um, so you get into the spirit. There's a, there's a sister who was getting medicine, you know what I'm saying? Was They had a, a officially, you know, declared right. insane. And, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. She got off the medicine. And uh, and started fucking with the Egyptian deity. Normal today, if she's not even in the room today, she'll be downloading this later. Normal, regular, fucking with the deity. Because they are mm. formula. They, they rescued her from it. Right, so right. Ultimately, that's what they were for. You know what I'm saying? That's what they were for. Okay. So, okay. so I would suggest that's one of the next steps that you get into, you know what I'm saying? Like, on a first physical level, uh, you know, crystals are a good way to start grounding yourself. But find you find some deity to get with, you know what I'm saying? That Yaz is a good deity right now. That's a who What was it? Which one is that? Yaz. I talked about him earlier. That's Hanneman. Okay. I went through this little detail of it. You didn't just at the beginning of the show, just when the show was ready, just... Listen to the beginning of the show because I went through it, but it's the Avatar of Hanuman, and it okay. came through. It came through as one of the names to use now for uh, for this human strife. Okay. For this human strife, but like I said, there's there's so many deities you can get into, okay. and it's easy, it's easy to work with. Get you a statue and just go for book. Go for broke. Go to charging and playing and all that shit. Right, right. Yeah. Gotcha. It's not really okay. hard at all. It's probably some of the easiest shit you can do for the biggest payoff that you'll get back. Mm. Well, that's what, exactly what I needed. I got one more, one more. Um, I guess, experience, and uh, I wanted to mm-hmm. get your take on it, and then I, I'll let mm-hmm. my eyes go. But um, you were talking about the dreams earlier, right? Um, mm-hmm. And um, this experience I just had, and all this has come like you know, as the energy's been moving around, it's been like I don't the the the, the pressure in the head is gone, but it's more so like um, it's just like all those wild moments, you know what I mean? Like ooh, that you know correlating. Okay, now that makes sense. So this you know all, everything kind of making sense. But um, back to uh-huh. back to the experience, I had a dream like, and I. And I usually, deja vu is usually, has been pretty prevalent, like, all my life. But Mm -hmm. just, um, I'm going to say, this was, this was last weekend, last weekend, um, last weekend, I just wanted to get out the house, and I I just walked around Atlanta Station, it was nighttime. I got in the car, Mm -hmm. and I was driving downtown, so... This shit was this shit was amazing. Like I was coming down, I went over this hill, I'm trying to think what street that was. It's 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 one of them side streets off P Street because it was a game, and I'm trying to get around, you know, the traffic, whatever, whatever. So I come down this hill, man, and it was like um, it it was greater than deja vu. It was like I had actually fucking stepped into the dream. I remember the dream that I had. But it it was this it was a deja vu but it was it was so much more um it was it was way more powerful. It was like when I was coming down this hill in the car getting ready to go to Peace Street, it was like I had actually skipped into the fucking dream. Like I was it was deja vu and I remember the dream but it was it, it I'm trying to explain it, you know what I mean? Paint the picture where you could mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when I came down that hill, man, it was like the exact same everything, so, like so basically the premonition you drink uh, is a premonition. Okay, because it so it was it was more it was greater future. than just like a deja vu that I've had where it'll be like, oh yeah, I, okay, I've been, 
you know, like with the deja vu feeling is is like that inkling or that that quick kind of. Well, mine has been like a, a quick kind of thing. What? But I don't remember the dream. That's what made this different. Was I actually remember the dream? I remember coming mm-hmm. down the hill and everything yeah. was exactly the same. Like I had, you know, went back or something like the time. I don't know if the time is. You know the linear time is breaking. Uh, I I don't know, man. But I want to. I just want to get your your take on that experience. You know, it sounds like you just dreamt of the future. Shit that we talked about earlier. Okay. Let me point out to. I'll be back next week. We're gonna keep going for a couple of weeks. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? To to you know, because we'll never get enough done. So we're gonna keep going for a couple of weeks. I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay. What what is it? Is every Wednesday eight? Right. This is my first time calling. Every Wednesday at eight, um, and I may answer your question. Um, mm. um, hold on, some can you give me a napkin? Um, yeah. Tissue. Um, like, uh, remember to email me at panicpack at hotmail dot com. Classes okay. are about to start soon. Um, you want to get in these classes? Probably some of the most important shit you could do. Email me so I'll let you know. So you can find out what all the classes are about. We've got the herb packs. Email Dr. Aline. Uh, hit him up on his website, DrAlineLBay.com. He has the chakra packages. So, so for instance, those crystals that you need to ground yourself, bro, you should be able to get them from Aline directly. Okay. He, has, he has a whole chakra thing going on. For Jerry Miller for Oregon, like I said, if you can't contact Jerry on Facebook, email me and I'll give you Jerry's info. Okay, where's so the lane back. again? Hit me with a lane one more time. Um, Dr. Lane L. Bay dot com. Dr. Lane L. Bay dot com, I got you. Yeah. And uh, all right, so uh, with the dream, what's happening seems like, in, um, and, I, and I noticed this with a few people. People are just having premonitions of the future at Deja Vu. So I'm going to see where this phenomenon, like I said, this couple of things happened with me. So I'm going to see where this phenomenon leads. If it is a phase based upon some comic shit, which is always happening, or if it's something, or if it's another level that has opened up. But I'm starting to hear more and more stories of people having premonitions of the future in their dreams. Well, uh, you know, uh, you know, there's always been that element there, but now I'm, it seems like it's a little bit stronger. So we'll see. We don't know what it is yet. We'll see if there's a phase or if it's something we're starting to tap into. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to go to area code 662. Area code 662, you're on the line. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. How did you do? Okay, how you doing? Uh, All right. I have two questions, and one of them is is about the comet. Uh, How how would it affect us, uh, uh, people on planet the Earth? uh, uh, Would it open our consciousness, or would it, um, you know? What? Say that again? The comet, this new comet that's coming, this ionic comet that they're talking about? I hope so. I mean, um... I ain't going to lie for me personally. I hear about a comment every other three weeks and mm-hmm. something's supposed to happen. Like I said, I, I, as soon as we start flying around this motherfucker, then we'll know what happened. But everything, everything is going to, every, everything, as above, so below, as within, so without. So there's definitely something that's happening. To put your finger on it sometimes, maybe a little bit more complex. And like I said, me personally, I'm at a level of consciousness where a lot of these things, I don't see a big effect. But people who are on their path, certain comments or sunspots or, or time periods may open them up to something else and we will notice trends in the black community, trends in consciousness, or even trends in ignorant people. So it'll, it's a reaction. What the reaction will be, you just never know. Um, I, I, and I don't even want to say you never know. Somebody who's studying it, if this has happened before or something that's happened, we'll tell you, well, this will happen, and the last time this happened, this happened. The last time Venus was in transit, or each time Venus is in transit, a new form of communication happens on the planet Earth. 
prior prior to the last one, it was the internet. Okay. Do you have to have one more question? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I noticed that sometimes my chakras come online. All of them be spinning at the same time through my whole body, mostly when the weather be changing, like rain, <clears throat> rainstorms or something like that. Or, or How do you know that? Because I I, just before just before it started raining, I started feeling uh, just a spinning vibrations in my hand, my feet, my toes, my whole body, and um, and and the third, same positions that my chakras are from my head to my neck, throat, you know, abdomen, all the way down. So the last time, one time I noticed when like when Hurricane to Katrina was coming in, that my chakras were spinning just strongly, strong, strong vibration. And I also was having a strong vibration in the forehead. So I was wondering when those energies come online, when the weather be changing, what's the best thing to do is start meditation or... or, or no, I tell, tell me I know what to wear. <laughs> Shit, give me a call. Like a hurricane's coming, nigga, batting down the hatches. <laughs> um, well, you know um, that magnetic... Uh, th- th- there's a change in magnetism when that happens. Um, you know, I'm not trying to compare you to say animals feel the same thing when it when it happens. Not because, uh, you know, not to be degrading, but they're still in tune with the earth. So you being in tune, you're just picking up on the on the on the energy. So um, I, I don't. Animals don't meditate when that shit happened. The motherfuckers get the fuck out of the <laughs> It was for high ground. So you might want to just you might want to go on a mountain or some shit. It's like, depending on how much tingling you got going on. Yeah. But yeah. um, I, I think I don't do what you feel like doing. I mean, I guess I guess you're, you're still tapped in. I don't know if that benefits in terms of spirituality. In terms of like, if you start meditating, you're gonna tap into something on that day that you wouldn't tap into on another day. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, the only thing I can say is experiment and see what happens with something like that. But it seems to me is just you're just tuned into the Earth's magnet, magnetic core, whatever generates that uh, that that energy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like, just like the woolly mammoth. You oh. know? <laughs> like, okay, thank you. The Willie Mammoth used to know. All right, sis. All right. We got area code 757. Area code 757, you're on the line. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, what's up? All right, we doing? How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Glad to have you on the line. Um, I got four questions here. Okay, I how can I better ma- maintain my trance state? What? Did you hear me? How can you better maintain your trance state? What are you doing to get in the trance? Uh, I, I stare at walls, and I stare at pattern material, <laughs> and I find at myself... Wall. Stare at the wall longer, and that will enhance your trance state. Okay. Like there's, okay. There's, there's nothing. I mean, whatever it is you're doing to get in the trance state, the the mm-hmm. whole purpose of any trance state is to stay in that moment. So it's about you being able to stay focused. So whatever is making you get there in the first place is working. So now you just mm-hmm. have to maintain it. There's mm-hmm. nothing I can say that's going to make you stay in the trance state better than what you can. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. There's plenty, understand. Of, there's plenty of things that work for me. You know what I'm saying? I could. Eat a Twix bar and go in the trance. So that may be that may be that that may work for me. Now, okay. now I would say this, and I hate to sound like a cheap salesman, but a herb pack can help. You know what I'm saying, um, get some crystals. That'll help. You know what I mean? Anything that's going to alter your consciousness. Mm-hmm. Staring at the wall is scrying, which is absolutely good. It's, even though it sounds like some dumb shit, but it's some shit. That's or staring mm-hmm. at a pattern. That's actually called scrying. It's actually science. There's a book called Scrying for Beginners. Um, uh, you can find it under that. I don't want to feel like turning around. So lazy, I don't feel like turning around and find the altar. But Scrying for Beginners. 
or anything. Yeah, I, 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 was crying. So, so if if it's working for you, you're just gonna have to figure out a way to stay in that zone yourself. All right, question number two. Okay, um, when I'm doing sigil magic, what's the science behind break slashing down the letters and breaking that down into a symbol? How does that? Well, what? How does the, what? I teach that in my class, and, and quite frankly, what's happening is the logical mind is looking for a sentence, something that's tangible. But because it's tangible, that same logical mind um, uses its ability to, to, to block. So everyone wants to be rich, but nobody is rich, and nobody's really getting rich because there's something in you that's sabotaging um, the path to your money, something in the way. So the idea of a sigil is if you're taking a phrase or a sentence or an intention and making it a symbol, you're bypassing your conscious mind. You're bypassing logic, and you're going directly to the source of what creates your reality, which is the subconscious mind. So you're taking a symbol or a picture that tells a thousand words and programming the subconscious mind with intention. Therefore, if you program with the intention, you bypass the opportunity shut down your goal. So the idea of symbolizing it um, is a way of bypassing logic and programming your subconscious mind. And the next question? Okay. Um, is there a sigil or symbol associated with Hanuman or Yav that I could find or use to help communicate with I, Yav? I mean, the, the easiest thing to do is probably look that up online, but mostly uh, with Hindu mythology, more than sigils or symbols, they use more imagery. So you'll see Hanuman's famous long tail bridge shot of Hanuman flying, or Hanuman, Hanuman saving Lakshman, or Hanuman uh, 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 holding Sri Lanka, or Hanuman flying with that medicine in his hand. You'll see these pictures depicted over and over again. So that those become the actual symbols in, in Hindu mythology. So their poses and this constant um, uh, depiction of this the, of the mythology is is usually bigger in Hindu uh, mythology. The, so so with Hanuman, you'll probably get some pictures of him in that same pose, that one knee with his heart open and all of that. You'll see it over and over again because his symbols are actually his talisman. All right. Mm-hmm. Next question. And you okay. can also take his. You can take his name and create a sigil. Oh, thank you. Yourself? Why not? All right. Um, this is something that. I mean, I guess anything is possible. But um, can spirits and demons, angels, manifest themselves as physical beings on Earth? No, I I mean, you know, this ain't the Crossroads video. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> see, you're at the Crossroads. You ain't going to see that shit. <laughs> what you have is these energies uh, can possess a human being. You get what I'm saying? Mm. And in th- the pathway to that possession is based upon these people's thoughts. So mo and and usually these are low thoughts of fear or weakness. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Or you asking for it? Oh, take me over, Calgon, take me away. So the, the the spirit, demon, devil, or whatever you want to call it, can manifest through a person's behavior, through them being possessed, obsessed, in a phase, uh, zone the fuck out, and so on and so forth. But really, all of these demons, angels, spirits are in you anyway. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So they're not bad in in the context of good versus evil. They're bad in the context of the of of your uh, uh, cultural situation. So if you're in, if you're in Walmart swinging an axe, that's bad. But if you had if you had the if you had the fucking Hunger Games swinging the axe, you're the man. You get what I'm saying? So that spirit of whoever's swinging the axe, let's just say, 
that you're letting possess you, that's in you. Um, there's a place and time for all of it, and it could be considered evil in one location and a virtue in the next. So if you you got to look at it more along them there lines. Mm. So there's not nothing that's going to walk on the earth. Now, I mean, I've seen stuff from other dimensions kind of show the fuck up and, and kind of bounce out, like make themselves known that they exist and that they're there. But they're sitting down eating dinner. You're saying, well, who is that motherfucker? You know what I'm saying? Like, like where did that, you know, there's stories of that. Me, I've never seen nothing like that and, you know, so on and so forth. Okay. But you've heard stories like that. You know what I'm saying? All right. Well, thank you very much. No problem, Mo. All right. All right. We're going to go to area code 860. 860, you on the line. All right, we're going to go to area code 267. Area code 267, you're on the line. Hello, brother from um, Panic. My name is Vanessa, and I'm just calling to ask um, a question. I have a, I have a cat, and I adore my cat. But for like the last few months, he has been meowing. And it's getting mm-hmm. to a point where it's so annoying. It's like you look at the walls, and he just meows and meows. And, you know, he's... Pretty much, he spoils you. He has everything that a cat is supposed to have. Is he fixed? Um, yes, yes, he is. Okay. He's about two years old now. He's not horny. No. <laughs> I I don't know. <laughs> well, I we got rid of our fucking. We, we got we got rid of our fucking cats, motherfucking bastards. <laughs> Both of them vanished. I, I, I was a cat lover. I was a cat lover. <laughs> but his ass had to go. Right. I don't, I don't know. I'm okay, well, another question. I'm not, a pet, I'm not a pet whisperer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, one more thing I wanted to ask about. Um, I feel as though, like, personally, I am ready now to start interacting with my um, ancestors. Like, I already mm-hmm. do give them offerings and, um, you know, I feed them, but I'm to a point now I would like to pretty much be, like, um, how can I say, like, communicating with them. In other words, mm-hmm. hearing what they tell me to do or or what should I go do, things of that nature. So um, I'm, like, to a point do? where... Have you ever communicated with them? Well, yes, as far as, like, I'm speaking to them, but I'm to a point where I want to, if I'm saying it correctly, I want to hear what they're saying to me. If and they never sense. spoke back. They never spoke back to you. Well, I'm saying, as far as like, um, I say like, how can I say like, um, in subtle ways they have, but I pretty much That's try to try and say it. It don't get no better than that. Oh, okay. It I get it get any better than what? Um, give me an example of a subtle way. Oh, like for an example, like um, say if I was speaking to them or give an offering in the next day or two, something would happen within the family. I knew that only me speaking to them is the only reason why it could happen. That's how I'm, that's I mean, what I mean. Ask me what in the world else would you need? That's it. If you listen closely okay. to what you said, you do something in the next day because of what you did, some shit happened. Take a bow. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Take a bow. Like, like, you know what I mean? Say ta-da. I okay. mean, there, there's nothing. I mean, first of all, we got to remember, spiritual communication is subtle energy, even though it can't oh. be in your face energy. But primarily, it's subtle energy. You, you, okay. you have them whispering you. Maybe that's why your cat is yelling. They're trying to yell at your ass. It's working. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> Yes. And if you're okay. looking at the wall, you're probably looking at some spirits. Now, right. you, you you have to take everything that you get and raise that up because, you remember, if you do nothing, you get nothing. If you do something and whatever you get is what you get, that's where you at. Revel in that shit. You know what I'm saying? 
You don't get yeah. to say, I do this, and two days later, because I did that, that happens, or how do I talk to him? That doesn't even make no sense. Okay. That's almost like, my girl's pregnant, but we don't know how to have sex. She's <laughs> <laughs> okay. pregnant, son. <laughs> Apparently, you do. So, yeah, so you, I have, you gotta, we, we, we're looking for a big explosion, a big bang. Oh. A lot of this shit is subtle. That's That's another thing. I should bring up a lot of this shit is subtle energy. A lot of this that's is in, intuitive energy, intuition. That's what this is about. This is that little voice in you that says, you know, something left, not right, or right, not left, or, <laughs> or yeah, now I got this GED or whatever the fuck you're trying to do. <laughs> now it's working. You know what I'm saying? One more that's thing, Brother Penny, before I have you on the phone. One more, sorry to interrupt you, sir. One more thing I want to ask you, Brother Penny. Um, I think I'm in a mindset. If I, I don't, I don't know who I am or not. I would like to start. If I'm hoping I'm saying the right thing, to see different levels of energy or spirits. I don't want to mm-hmm. be. Make sure you correct me. I basically want to start to see the beyond the veil. I put you like that. Then all you have to do is look. <laughs> there's, there's nothing. He said look. <laughs> he said <laughs> look. Nothing. Yeah, there's nothing in you that that's stopping you, but you, but it seems like you think that there's something you're gonna see that you ain't never seen before. You know what I'm saying? When you pass that veil, know what you're gonna see? Same slack ass niggas you looking at right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but see so, what it is, that so my, if, my sister. If you're looking, if you're looking, listen closely now. If you're looking for something, and it seems like you're looking for a difference. And and that may be your problem. Um, consciousness is not about becoming different. It's about understanding what it is you already are. So you need to understand first and foremost that it's happening, and the way that it's happening to you is exactly how it's supposed to happen to you, is exactly how you agree that you need that communication. But you have to recognize what you're getting as communication, and you have to be able to enjoy and be satisfied with that for that to even go to the next level. If you're looking for okay. a constantly looking for another satisfactory level, you will never find it. You get what I'm saying? There's one of them motherfuckers where you busting a good nut, but you're saying, I know there's better. It's like, but <laughs> you busting a nut, but, but look, at your, look at the type of nuts you're having right now. But I know there's better. It's like you never, you, you never really can enjoy what you got going on right now because you all, cause in your mind you feel... That there's something better, you know what I'm saying? And one more thing, I want to ask you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, my sister, that yeah, she's not even practicing no kind of like spiritual, a concert or anything, but she can see spirits like you open up a door, you go outside of a door, but she can see like whatever it is that she wants to see. I'm like, how are you able to see that? Where she's not like me, who's focused on you know being a higher conscious level, but she can see spirits like turn on a Turn on your light. Does she have trauma in her life? Oh yes, she don't have. Yes. <laughs> most people, uh, most people with trauma can see that shit. Um, okay. Because when you have trauma, a lot of your, your 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 spiritual self or your astral self usually goes into another world. So it's not like she's seeing them in this world. She's seeing the other world because oh. it's a form of it's a form of escaping. So. Girls who've been molested—that's probably one of the they, they the most spiritual. Ones. There was this or, or beaten. There was this one chick I was fucking with back in the days, and you know she was really abused. Like her pops used to beat her with bike chains and shit like that. And she, she used to tell me she used to leave her body and be laughing. I'm like, yeah, whatever, bitch. Until I started sleeping next to this hoe. Woo! I see this motherfucker just chilling over her body. I, we used to be fucking in, in, in the dark. I used to see all sorts of demonic wow. shit in her face. I was like, get off of me. Like, <laughs> fucking real okay. sick. I used to wake up with scratches and shit. Like, what the fuck, son? <laughs> like, okay, I understand that. She's telling me she's fucking with these niggas. He said the niggas woke up paralyzed, <laughs> you know, for like fucking 25 minutes. He said the niggas just woke up paralyzed. He said he got up and was like, Woo, okay, later, bitch. <laughs> Never came back. All right. 
all well, told I think, she's, mm-hmm. she's abused. Abused. Mm. So she, she's escaping that world, and, and it's not like it's not like she's just, she's only seeing what was all was all the way around. See, when we have a normal logical life, we're sitting around saying it, it, there's no reason to see it. It doesn't exist. When I had to move from in Atlanta, we had to move to this house, but it took a week to get ready, so we had to do that hotel with them fucking cats, five cats in the goddamn bathroom in the, in the overnight hotel. Believe me, I was seeing motherfucking ghouls and goblins walk around. I tell them niggas, I just want to come with y'all. I don't want to hang around this motherfucker. Kill me now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. See him all day. The niggas are standing right there. But you're really looking at, you're, you're actually leaving this dimension. It's not like, which is merged, which is there all the time. Okay. Well, I thank you for the panic. Mm-hmm. But if she's not seeing it, it doesn't matter because they're not helping her anyway. Just by seeing it, that doesn't help shit. You're right. That's the truth. <laughs> That's the truth right there. You're doing much more than she's doing by talking to your ancestors having a reaction. Right. I do keep in contact with them all the majority of the time. I just thought that I'm trying to take it up to another higher frequency, a higher level. Well, but I you guess can. Doing... Just, 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 just tell yourself that you are. And whatever it is, you need to be satisfied with where you are right now and then try yes. to try and experiment on your own to go to the next level, whatever you define, not by what I say, well, this is the next level, oh. so go ahead. You get what I'm saying? So if you say, I'm talking to this one and doing that one, let me try to talk to this one and do that one. Let me try to get that one and do this. Play play your own game. And you know one more thing, Brother Pat, I do agree with you about the different deities. Um, like I have Oshun and Yemiya in my home, but I have also the, in the statues I mean, and I also decide I like I would like to get my water. You know, I was told that her energy walks with me. Mm-hmm. Um, I I was told from several other people. I was thinking about setting up a shrine or let's say a shrine, like a statue of Mama Walter. Would that be all right too? Because I was I was told to the past, yeah. oh, don't mix me with these. Like, think about it. Well, come on now, think about that. You, you see, that's that's the kind of mentality I definitely talk against. Okay. Do okay. Do as thou will. Who the fuck? Who the fuck? You're who, right. Would that be all right? Who, You're right. Uh, right I do agree. Mm-hmm. Who says it wouldn't? Who says it wouldn't? You're right. You you know, Explain to me the method, know. the method, the person, or the science that says it wouldn't. Oh. What's the origin that says it wouldn't? Yeah, that's what I thought. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Christianity. <laughs> You're right. You're some nigga right. on some nigga on the web. You know what I'm saying? If you mm-hmm. if you probe your own mind, you find none of that shit is solid in your own fucking mind. Yeah, so, you're right. You some shit, some shit you heard somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And then I'm about to tell you some other shit you heard somewhere. No, go ahead and do it. No, you got to you <laughs> got to be a G. You know what I'm saying? Do you do whatever the fuck you want to do? That's the okay. that's the nature of this shit. Do what the fuck you want to do. Who's gonna stop you? She's going to beat you up? She's going to go down to Walmart. Uh-huh. This is Mommy Ward, the motherfucker. Why you do that? No, I'm just saying, bitch. Come on. This is me, Mommy Water. I no sense. Okay. Now, well, I, think I had this conversation before. I had this conversation before. When I was in New York, in, in Brooklyn, small space, New York, all my deeds were mixed together and it was fine. That's what my... That's that's all I could afford. That's all I could do. That's what was my reflection. When I came to Atlanta and had more space and did the same thing, that's when I had a problem because now I had the space to separate certain deities, certain pantheons. So when I started okay. mixing it together like I was used to in Brooklyn, it was a little bit more havoc because my living condition didn't add up with how I was setting up my feng shui. Mm. So now, oh, so now, okay. so what I started doing was, I mean, the fairy kingdom. There's a there's a Zen kingdom. There's a mm. African kingdom. There's the Egyptian kingdom. There's the Baphomet shit. There's my I got shit for my subconscious mind. We got a whole entire spirit room upstairs. Ancestors, Yemen Yah, Oshun, Ogun, uh, Omak mm. altar, Hindu altars. All that shit is separated. 
And, okay. and and now the energy has is place to breathe. Not because it was happy because of my personal living condition. So you do what you gotta do based upon how you live. These are just goddesses, you know what I'm saying? If they don't have a mythology, that's the only thing you're looking out for. Horus and Set shouldn't be together. In the mythology, the energy represents two different things. So it's going to cause oh. havoc in the house. Separate Horus and Set. That's it. Oh, or, okay. Or whatever in the mythology. But ain't no God. I mean, if you can, put Mommy Ward on one side, Yimmy on the other side. They ain't got to be in the same place. Right, right. I understand now. I just thank you for this um, help me to understand this more but in a practical sense, you know, just hear other people speak about things like, oh, you can't have certain deities in that nature. But now I have a good comprehension on what you're saying to me. I appreciate it. I just want to say thank you again. Yeah, don't, don't fall into, no problem, don't fall into the religious mindset because really if you question where it comes from, guarantee you that's, I'll get that silence all the time because uh, it only comes from your own fear, fear that's this stems from religion. Religion is a whole story about what you can't do. Mm-hmm. And all we did was mm-hmm. transfer the same mentality into this shit. You can't do that. Somebody's gonna be mad. Hey, no. Come on, man. Think about this. Let's let's pretend you are mommy water. <laughs> okay. And I put you on a statue with I put you on the altar with Yim and Yah. You think you're in the cosmos mad? You think there's a lady in the cosmos going, This bitch <laughs> How dare her? You think that. Think about that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, we can see this bitch. We can see this bitch. She put me on her altar with him and Yah. Oh, shit. First of all, they're the same mm-hmm. deity. First of all, they're the same deity. That's number one. Mm-hmm. But you think, wow. think, about, think, about, cause think about the alternative. You know what I'm saying? Oh, right. Shit. Who the fuck she did? Oh, it's on now. Is that what you think she's saying? I'm going to give her back. Just like that other dumb shit. This nigga Sean Cook brung it up. You ever go to the Orisha things and they tell you you got to put on a white hat? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> why do they tell you? Why do you have to tell you to put on the white hat? I guess for purity and corrupt different kinds of spirits, I think they told me. They okay. admit they said it to me. Okay, so now you're dealing with a deity that could change your life, that you're praying to, but it can't get through the white hat? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said, right. he, yeah. listen, I said, he told me this shit. I'm like, this is kind of interesting. He said, this is Mommy Water and, and Yemen Yah and Obatala, these are the baddest motherfuckers on the planet. But not if you got that white hat on. You got the white hat on, they can't get it. They can't make it through the white hat. So you worship right. some shit that can't get through the white hat. You know what I'm saying? Right. Come on, now get it together. We not even thinking no more. Oh right, shit, I'm straight. I got my white hat on. The deity of the universe that I'm kissing his ass, pouring all his water, giving all this fucking fruit to, and shit to that I'm asking to change my life that I got married to. Can't make it through the white hat, son. Can't make it through the white hat. So it's like, we're not even thinking no more. This shit is so fucking yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. We're not even thinking no fucking more. Mm-hmm. Can't make it through the white hat. He told me that shit. I'm like, yeah, nigga, she's funny for that. She said, I don't know why I'm worse than some shit that can't fucking penetrate a white hat. Wow. <laughs> <You're> right. So, <laughs> so mm-hmm. we're not even thinking any fucking more. You know what I'm saying? I'm in this yeah. drummer with a pizza hat on and the mirror going, what the fuck? I look like I'm about to make a fucking large pepperoni. Right. So the truth, man. We, we need to reevaluate how we think about these things. And that's some of the overall stuff that I was talking about tonight. We need to reevaluate how we think about these things and where where the origin is from. Because if you think of the origin, it, it fucking makes no sense. First of all, let's be clear on this. Voodoo, and if you get Malo Regard's book, Secrets of Voodoo, mm-hmm. because once all the African slaves from the from from the West, a, a, a host load of them were caught and they were mixed together, they then took all many African systems and created Voodoo. So Voodoo right. is not a pure religion that they were practicing. It's, it's a collection of different pure religions. 
So all this voodoo and you must be initiated and voodoo is real, even that's an amalgamation or an update. And within the realm of voodoo, the Petros was an update on the voodoo based upon the war. So that shows you that the ancestors was constantly thinking, the black folks were constantly thinking that this shit needed and should, could, and has been updated. They used much gunpowder because the white man was using gunpowder against them, so more in the petrol, there's gunpowder in the rituals. They factored Mm. in an element of something new to combat spiritually something that was new that was happening to them. This isn't, this is, mm-hmm. what I'm talking about is not fucking radical. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the voodoo yeah. that you're talking about, that you're trying to keep pure, is an amalgamation of fucking many different religions. So yes, you need to is. get it together. Secrets of, secrets of voodoo, Milo Regard, he names all the goddamn uh, uh, African countries that are involved in or have a part in voodoo, the far people and the foreign people and the this people and the that people, the Dogos and the Dahomey and all of these motherfuckers that was a part of the African slave trade came up with voodoo. Mm-hmm. So tell yeah. you, you know, we need to we update when necessary. Using America mm-hmm. now. America. Remember that shit from mm-hmm. Boy, you in America yes. now. Brit- Grits, dummy. Time to update. Grits, dummy. Time to update. Mm. Oh, okay. You, can, you wow. cannot do the same African shit thinking you're going to get a new result. That's the definition of insanity. Yeah, right. right. You need to do some African-American shit, <laughs> whatever that <laughs> is. Well, yeah, I understand. And I just thank you once again, okay? Speak to you soon. No problem. Don't no panic. Okay, bye-bye. No problem. No problem, sis. Let's go back to the phone lines. We got area code six zero nine. Area code six zero nine. You're on the line. I can't remember just that. Well, right, what's the number? But two rounds at three. Right. Well, hey. when the truck got to me before us. They said the truck down with the temperature was down to five. So drop that sign, nigga. Come on. How fuck did the temperature get all the way down to fifty nine? He sound like he's about to beat his lady. That's your job, bitch? That's not your job. <laughs> that ain't your job, bitch. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here we go. Two two five. Two two five, you <laughs> oh, I thought that was three. That's, that's her arguing back. Look, nigga, you don't be doing shit anyway. I thought that was just that argument. I'm gonna speak for a second. Here we go. Right, fuck you, nigga. That's why my mama don't like you, nigga. That's why my mama don't like you, nigga. <laughs> if you, always, you and your mama always in my business, bitch. You your mama and your goddamn sister. Right, you go to Eric. You go to Eric. seven seven four. Hold chap, hold chap, brother Eileen, brother Panic. How are you both? How you doing? Peace, peace, peace. peace. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for the invitation um, I received today uh, from Facebook. This is Sekhmet Hotep. And, All right. Um, yeah, I, I've been listening for a while, and uh, I got three cell phones. I'm at work, so I had to just keep recharging one and, you know, redialing and hoping that I could, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, finally that, get that through. <laughs> so the patience does pay off. Um, I wanted to mention one thing, uh, first off, was um, uh, about seeing numbers on a digital display of a clock, which would always be um, the same, like, three-digit or four-digit numbers, meaning 1111 
or mm-hmm. 333 or 222. And, and a lot of times I'll also see my birthday, which is 622. So um, I'm wondering if you know if that has a part of, um, uh, you know, the whole intuition thing. Uh, it's like I don't, need, I don't look at the clock to say, oh, is it, you know, 1111 yet. It's just I just happen to look and I'll say, oh, damn, this happens all the time. And it's been happening for like maybe like the past two years. Well, um, you so say this. I wanted to know if either one of you had anything to say about that. Well, what I would say is, um, you have an internal clock. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I would hate to burst bubbles, but I've never seen that as anything too special. That okay. every person I've known has said, that. I always look at the clock and it's five twenty-seven or five. But we do have an. Mine is four forty-four. Okay. So we have an internal clock. I mean, this has been happening since I was a kid. We have an internal clock, so it, it's something in your psyche. Once you start convincing yourself of it, then your clock just brings you there. It just brings. You. That's what I noticed because I don't see nothing else that manifests after that mm-hmm. digital clock. You know what I mean? So if, if it was like, oh shit, the number hit and it's it's yeah. that number all the time, then I'd be like, wait a minute, there's something to this. But nothing never happens. It's just the clock number. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so, okay. so I, I just, what I noticed, I, I mean, only thing I've noticed, and I've tried, but believe me, me, I tried with that shit. Ain't nothing happened. Okay. With that shit. No okay. lotto numbers, no scratch offs, nothing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? No, not, not even I, good, I, you know, not, like, you know, you ever get to the cash register and it's that number? Oh, shit. Yeah. It's, it's, that, it's that number, and that don't mean nothing. It's just you bought a yeah. hero and the you just a hero and some chips. It's like, oh shit, it came up to four forty four. Oh shit, something's gonna happen. Yeah. Something's gonna happen. Something's gonna happen. It's like, well, ain't nothing happened. Okay. Well, okay. I guess it's some good chips. But maybe right. I'm gonna die at that time. That's the time yeah, I'm gonna die at four forty four. Um of of um you know, like if you think of something hard enough that say like you, you you're searching in in the bookstore for a particular mm-hmm. book, and mm-hmm. you know you've been searching high and low, but I don't know if it's like the the disease, the desire or the need to want to find this particular book uh, uh, mm-hmm. pushes you to the point where you don't give up and you actually find what it is you're looking for. So but that's is, the, is that, that, that's with the, that law uh-huh. of attraction kind of thing, or I guess you could put it under that umbrella. But I mean, if you look at this, it's, 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 it's magnetism, cause and effect, which is under mm-hmm. the laws of attraction. I mean, if you're you're vibrating on that, you're trying to resonate with that level, which is basically find this book or find this information. So eventually, okay. you're going to magnetize yourself to it. Same way you find a boyfriend, same way you find the speakers you want. Because that may not necessarily be a book, and it's got to be the laws of attraction kind of thing because it's like if you want a Snickers bar, you do the same kind of thing. Oh, Snickers, 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 <laughs> till you eventually get one. It's just you just know where to get that, and it's easier to get. You know what I'm saying? See, the book story sounds a little bit more mystical because you don't know where to get it. So when it manifests, you're like, well, oh, that's magical. But you know where to get a Snickers, so when it manifests, you go, oh, that's just me going to the store. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But each, each, it, it, there's, it's clearly your thoughts because there's absolutely nothing in your mind that could emerge without you, without being from a prior thought anyway. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, if anything, it's just this, this magnetism, you could say law of attraction, but um, you're willing it so hard that you eventually – subconsciously bring yourself to that. And actually, if you actually program the intention and forget it, it happens quicker. Okay. You, you, um, that's the whole idea of magic, that you're doing things to impact the subconscious mind where this, this stuff is working beyond your conscious mind's ability to sabotage it. Okay. So somewhere along the line with you, you were able to get your conscious mind to agree that you're able to find books because the next person will be able to tell you, I never find books. Mm-hmm. Because in their mind, they, ha- they haven't been able to consciously attract the books because their conscious mind is telling them 
they'll never find it. But your conscious but, mind is telling you, I always get what I want. You get in this yeah. particular case. In this particular case. So so like I said, it's all about what you can convince yourself of. So if you believe this is uh, a part of your uh, power, then it becomes a part of your power. Oh, I'll give it, leave it to me. I'll get the book. You're that person. Uh, the next person is like, I never get the book. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's the difference is just how y'all think. So that's, okay. That's, so I thank you for that. And um, just one quick thing is, I I saw something quickly uh, on Facebook about. Uh, Drawing money to you by burning a green candle. Mm-hmm. You heard anything about this? I mean, this is the first time I'm hearing. Uh, well, excuse me, the second time I've, I've heard this. But um, I mean, because yes, I, I, teach, haven't, I, I teach, haven't started up. Um, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say yes. I teach candle magic in in my class, and um, so so we go into detail. Candles. Uh, I teach the science of it. Um, the because what you're doing with a what a flame does um, is one of the things that gets you in what you call alpha state. An alpha state is the state where the subconscious mind dominates the conscious mind, and then whatever your intention is, you're programming the subconscious mind with that flame. So color frequencies, um, uh, green is the color frequency of abundance. Um, that's why plants and the planet is green. So money represents green, a currency. So by aligning yourself up symbolically with the color, with the flame, the programming, and whatever ritual, whatever smell, or anoint, or whatever you use to anoint the candle, there's specific techniques, um, like I said, to lighten that candle or the mindset to get into to attract, because it's still more laws of attraction. You're just using now a ritualistic tool to, to line your mind up. That's what any ritual is. It's all cause and effect which later, like I said, for better known as laws of attraction, it's all of that, but in every ritual is that, and every ritual is a way of, of programming, mind control, self-programming, self-hypnosis. The candle is self-hypnosis. Color frequencies hold an impact. Color dictates mood. Red dictates a mood. Green dictates a mood. Black dictates a mood. Pink dictates a mood. So with that with that in mind, all of these different energies have been mapped out to certain colors and certain color candles, green being money, prosperity, and so on, heart chakra and all of that. Mm-hmm. So, yes, does it work? Yes, but it, it works along with your willpower. Okay. So, in other words, you just don't light the candle and all of a sudden, okay, I see you later. <laughs> you, you, you light, you're lighting it up and you're using it to, to self-program. To self hip to hypnotize yourself into attracting what it is you want via the subconscious mind, i.e., bypassing the conscious mind, which is telling you you should be broke and telling you it doesn't believe you should be rich. Well, not because it's being mean, because it's trying to keep you the same. The conscious mind seeks to keep you the same. So any form of change has to come from the subconscious mind because the conscious mind is trying to keep you normal. So if I say there are pigs flying. It's not bad or good. You just you're not going to believe it because it breaks out. It breaks you from being normal. So your conscious mind. So you being rich breaks you from being normal. You right. being the problem solver sometimes breaks you out from being normal. You being unclumsy breaks you out from normalcy. So your conscious mind tells you that you are clumsy, not because it's trying to be mean, because it's trying to keep you the same. Yeah. Because you feel safety in being the same. You know what I'm saying? It's a little bit more difficult to be something new. So and once you break out of that, it 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 can't have that hold on you anymore. Well, the you idea of magic and the idea of magic and ritual is to bypass that process, and that's what right. that's what I teach: how to get past where you're going past the conscious mind, where you're not even asking mm-hmm. it for permission, you're not even dealing with it on a level where 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 it has the opportunity. To sabotage what it is you're trying to do, so you go, you're getting directly to the source. That's what I teach in my class: how to go directly to the source, which is the subconscious mind, which is where your magical reality starts to take place. And magic is only what you believe in. It's only what okay. what you believe in, or what someone can get you to believe in. 
You get what I'm saying? So, again, mm-hmm. that's why I point out white people are constantly trying to get you to believe their bullshit. Even even they, you believe their bullshit enough that we even speak about them as the opposite. Well, I'm better. I'm a god. I'm a this. I'm a that. It's like okay. the mere fact that you think that their opposition is a compliment for them. They're not even your opposition. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, okay. it's, it's scientific just to to make you think that they are actually your competitor when you don't even have to factor them in for your reality. And right. really this is because th- this is why they beat you and really lynch you to death because they were reprogramming you. And then they told you this will work for years to come. Well, what were they mm-hmm. talking about? Mm-hmm. They were talking right, about right. you will always have a conscious plight on trying to get out of this. They always could, no matter how far you get out, they, there's a way to rope, rope you back in, i.e. Trayvon, Sean mm-hmm. Bell. There's mm-hmm. always going to be a way to rope you, no matter how far you go, they always have a new around your net. And it's in, by, if you look at that 4400 episode, episode four, number one, you'll see that they, they wrote a script to kick in your ass. They, it's sporadic is a script to kick in your ass. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Okay, I'd like to um, ask you both for your uh, email addresses or your website. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm panicpack at hotmail.com, P-A-N-I-C-P-A-C-K at hotmail, panic panic pack. Pack at hotmail. Yeah, okay, you can get any hotmail. information on any of the products that I pimp off, you know, herb packs for the pineal gland and, and classes. Okay. And if, okay. You just want, if you just want free links, so all the shows I've done, I'll be happy to do that. Just email me, say links, and I'll be happy to pass off any of the links so you can get plenty of free information, which is more okay. valuable than anything I sell. All right. Thousand, Thank thousand you. hours of, of information. All right. And uh, Brother Ali, you your go email to, or website? Yes, you can go to um, my uh, website www dot drlimelbay dot com. That's D R A L I M E L B Y. Drlimelbay dot com, and you can go to any section there. We have herbs, we have um, chakra crystals, we have candles, books, uh, um, other Black types shoes. of jewelry and copper and everything else you can possibly think of. Um, so just go okay. there and check everything out. Mm-hmm. All right, thanks. And um, uh, Brother Panic, you mentioned a book earlier to one of the sisters about astral dynamics. What's the guy's name again? Something Bruce. Robert Bruce. Oh, Robert Bruce. Okay. Robert Bruce. All right. Bruce. Thank you so Thank much, you brothers. Say. It's been great talking with the both of you. You have a good Thank night. You. Oh yeah, right. you too. Hook up. Okay. Hook Hook up. Up. Peace. All right. Peace, peace. Um, Brother Penny, we got three minutes left. Shoot, they might just give us two. Do you have any closing remarks? Yes, we'll be back next week. Um, we're going to do some weeks, weeks and weeks, as long as it leans up for it. I'm up for it. I'm ready to talk again, finishing up the book. Um, email me, panicpack at hotmail.com for classes, which are about to start soon. Now is the time to get in. Uh, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna do. We're gonna deal with some uh, topics too. There's some things I got in the pot that we're gonna deal with. So wh- while we're doing Q and A, I'm gonna sneak a few lectures in there. I'm thinking about uh, a mind control one, and definitely, uh, most likely, a calip off one. Um, most likely, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep going. Um, at the very least, we're going to do the Q&A and always have something to talk about. And um, we're going to pick up where we left off. 2014 is going to be a lot of information, and we're going to keep it going. All right. Um, Brother L, you got any closing remarks before we go? Yeah, as always, brother, always a pleasure listening to you. And uh, yes, you right about, uh, I was going to talk about uh, a brother and I, about two Saturdays ago, we uh Mess with the tarot cards for a while, mm-hmm. and what we have discussed that really no one can tell you what your reality is, or right. what what the tarot cards say about you is, is, is what you uh, determine right. what the tarot, uh, tarot cards. 
right? Uh, is well, these, these are archetype? Uh, uh, the divination is like an archetype energy, mm-hmm. but you could. Is personal is your interpretation. First world order radio. Finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio. Begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. For seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories, shit that works. 